There's a song by our friend Titanic Sinclair who always screws me and stuff. Look up Titanic online. From Harmontown. Where? Yeah, from Harmontown. We're in Harmontown. In Hollywood, California. Welcome once again. Harmontown is now in session. So many friends. Spencer Creighton, everybody. Spencer. Rob That's our show. Good night. Thanks for coming. How about the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon? Thank you. Thank you. What a show. What a show we had. What tonight. a show! We got so much planned for you tonight. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. All right, I came up with a, uh, a, a bit. I have a bit. Uh, Here comes the bit. I have a real bit. Do you have a, a segment music for a real bit I have? Yeah. Sometimes you think of a real bit, and it just seems like something that a real comic would do. Okay, so you know how, uh, you know how everybody thinks professional wrestling is fake? Right. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. I I I, I just decided last night. I'm already messing up the bit. <laughs> that uh, that I think all other wrestling is is fake. Uh, and then because you can't tell me that uh, for six thousand years teams of people have been getting together and dressing the same and trying to pin each other on a mat and nobody thought to bring a snake or a two by four. <laughs> Yeah. So for 14 more years of, of, of that, and I'd have like a strong 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So right but in the meantime, back to the regular show, which is nothing. Uh, hey, you, you're like 59 minutes short of a full HBO comedy special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, is the microphone supposed to be back further? Do, do, don't you guys like it when it's back further? I liked it better. Do, w- w- the other way. <laughs> I like that better not, clothes. Not talking to you. Um, that's okay. Thank you for the mushrooms last night. <laughs> oh. So Dan and I, Dan and I did, and Cody, we did mushrooms, and I we went to a fancy restaurant, which is a terrible idea. I, I didn't know we were going to have dinner. Je- Jeff in the car. What the did way, you uh, think you were going to do at the restaurant? <laughs> Exercise? I didn't know we were going to a restaurant. Jeff in the car on the way to the Bel Air Hotel. Uh, so, so you should take them now because that way, like, because they take an hour to kick in. And then I think we, I don't know when we took them, but exactly an hour after we took them, we were at a maitre d' like station. See, I, I, like didn't, in a I didn't know Bueller we were having thing, a like, fancy like, dinner. And, and it's a, like like in a, in a restaurant that where everybody was like, that better be Peter Jackson. <laughs> Because otherwise it's 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 a homeless hodor like, like it's a thing like I was just dressed well, I was wearing these clothes and uh, Jeff was wearing a suit that was like then we ordered the food and then it came and it looked like Beetlejuice and like I, and my, there, there my was, appetizer was terrifying it looked like my my salad was like talking to me and it was wild and you you, you don't want to I, rem- I rem- in my memory what you ordered looked like an Indian headdress yes it did. Yeah, it, exactly. was like, it was like there were like leaves coming out uh, uh, of different colors. What was that movie? The uh, the uh, Mayan uh, sacrifice movie that Mel Gibson produced. What? Apoc- uh, my, my meal looked like apocalypto. apocalypto. <laughs> he, he ordered the apocalypto. Um, and, 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 sorry, and, I'll phase this way too sometimes. And, and I, I, I looked over. Cody was laughing like crazy. Dan looked. You, you looked really paranoid. I was upset. Uh, and, and, I, and I just said, "Hey, you guys, why don't you guys take a walk? I'll I'll take care of the, the dinner." So I, I pretended like I was your like handler, like your manager, because I had a suit on. And I said, uh, "Mr. Harmon and Cody, uh, they had uh, th- th- they found out they had to leave." Um, 
may I please get their food to go for them and I'll take care of it. And so I sat well, there. we're like running around in the front. Like, I'm a seagull. Uh, so I walk out. I, I, I enjoyed my dinner. And, and it was trippy because I, I was sitting there. Like when you're on mushrooms, you're a little, you're very self-aware. And you feel like everybody else is also kind of aware of you, but maybe they're not at all. Right. But now I'm just a dude in a suit with all like three people's food in front of me. <laughs> And I, I made it out of there alive. I had a couple drinks, and I, uh, I, I tipped pretty big on your card, so I hope you like that. <laughs> and I bone out, and then Harmon is sitting out by himself in a, at a fountain. And he's got, his, he's got his left hand in the fountain. <laughs> and the, the water's tr- trickling on his hand. And I go over there, and you were like, the fountain was talking to you. I, so I, I, when I, I, I ra- laid my palm on top of the surface of the water... <laughs> And when I dipped it beneath the surface, my hand became an ape's hand. <laughs> and if I, if I lowered it, it became an alien hand. Because apes are more sophisticated than aliens. And primitive, the more primitive the life, the more advanced it is. Because the more primitive the life, the more it, it's able to contact me. Because it's based on water, and water is the conduit. So... <laughs> So as I as I kept my palm on top, as when Jeff came up, I had just figured out that if I keep my palm on the top of the water, I can I can listen to all life. And do you do you know what it said? What Jeff it sat say? down. And he said, "What did it what say? What did all life say?" It said, "Tell our story." I will. And I will. They, you, they, life hitched its wagon to the right star that night. <laughs> I, I see your story set of the Old West, but with Andy Dick as the sheriff. Uh, someone pay me. Um, uh, I watched Aliens. That's what I did last night. Steve's got cups. We need those. Thank, Thank you, Steve, Steve. Levy. Steve, Steve Levy, everybody. Watch the second. Watch the second half of Aliens. That's a good movie. It still holds up. It's fun. The second one. The the first Aliens. Oh, don't. I mean, okay. <laughs> what? There was only what? The second movie in the Alien franchise. The right. First and I watched Cameron the movie. second half of it. Right. Uh, just the second half. My favorite. Just the second half. My favorite what? line in that movie is not "Game Over, Man," but but in that same conversation. It's just, like because like, like, Bill Paxton and his, she's like she knows the way around the thing, and he's just like but she would you put her in charge and I didn't do it I don't, well know, if then, keep, I don't know if you keep it score we just got her asses kicked back there all the other ones I feel like well it's Bill Paxton it's like it's sort of like Bill Paxton it, 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 like, like, it's great because he, in the sense of like oh Christopher Walken or Nichols said like it's like a caric- caricature of himself but that line why don't you put her in charge I kind of also I was like I was like immediately I was like yeah what the fuck is going on man we're gonna get killed like, like you know what I mean like right. it was good it was also like he, he could there was a tunnel you know, you, to you know his soul good in that? Paul Reiser Paul Reiser's very good in that Paul Reiser's great in it yeah, that whole yeah. movie is it's like really a slam good. dunk yeah. slam dunk that's a slam dunk Spencer you, you, ever, you ever done mushrooms are you a mushroom guy nah man because you know here's the thing they say about mushrooms you know what they say they say if you think you're gonna have a good time you will and I can't think I'm. Yeah, have well. A good time. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Like, well, people freak you out by saying it's like, it's like this weird Mobius strip of like, oh, if you think it's possible to have a bad trip, then you will have a bad. No, trip. No, I but, only think it's possible to have a bad trip. <laughs> and 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 yeah, yeah, I, I understand completely. Same thing. I, I just I just took the, I, you know I wanted my uh, I didn't want my girlfriend to think I was a pussy. filthy fucking hippies. But I. I <laughs> But I, 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 like, but Cody, Cody had a had a bad time. We we both kind of had a, a, overall a bad time. I mean, I think it was worth it to just communicate with all of life, like for. But I think I think if you if, like, she was we, saying like demon, demons were coming we, out. We only took oh, enough no. to have kind of a bad ecstasy trip. Like like it wasn't it wasn't like we didn't. It's like, like like I think the, the the point of psilocybin is supposed to be ideally that you and they're using it to treat post traumatic stress now because and other ailments because psilocybin has a clinically measurable effect of some. 
something previously thought to be immeasurable, which is perspective. Like you actually take enough of it and you you walk away with the sense that you are part of a larger whole. And it's sort of like they give it to like uh, you know people that were in Iraq and got got blown to bits and 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 are, and are un, un, you know having trouble coping with that that stress and shoving it down. And they they, they experimented with giving them uh, psilocybin and, uh, and 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 they're so they're finally doing some scientific research into these effects. I think if you don't take quite enough to push you through onto Jim Morrison's other side <laughs> that you simply are just like super aware of yourself because I, I got out of the shower and I was just like staring at myself in the mirror and uh, I knew that I was disgusting but I was also like <laughs> I was like I'm beautiful like like <laughs> I was like Cody after like 20 minutes she's like baby you okay and I said yeah I'm, I'm an ape like I just know that I'm an ape and I was like I was just naked and all of the, the patterns of my body hair and how they were revealing that I had descended from a, 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 an ape that had gone through a semi-aquatic phase that's right <laughs> That's why we're hairless. That's the, uh, uh, look it up. Elaine Morgan's aquatic ape theory. And it was being proven to me because the scintillating drips of water were go following this, like, you know, this, like, perfect, like, pattern. And it was just like this, uh, you know, everything moves when you're on mushrooms. So I was like, my, 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 my big pink round gut was, like, pulsating, like, this, like, cocoon of, full of baby apes. And I was just like... And I was just going like this and w w watching my belly button and my nipples like turn into this mouth going like, ah, this, this face going like. It sounds, it sounds like you had enough. I had, I, had, I did, but it was all kind of up here. It was, it was all about yeah. the self. And I think that, I think that a true mushroom trip. I told you guys to take three. You only yeah, took two, Yeah, kids, right? if you're doing it, take more. <laughs> Uh, and tell, tell the cops I, I said it was hey, all right. Uh, um, the, fir uh, the first time I ever did mushrooms, I was with Jason Sudeikis and a friend of his from Second City. We were in Vegas, and he was doing a show. at Dude, the this story is such horseshit. <laughs> I'm so sick of you telling the story about you and Jason Sudeikis and his comedy friends like do, taking mushrooms. I know it's fucking not true. And it you is true. I was, in the, I was in the bathroom, and I, I heard knock, knock, knock. And then Jason Zegas is outside. He's like, "Hey, man, you okay? Because we just taking mushrooms." And I was, uh, I was like, "Yeah, I'm cool. I'm just talking to the shampoos right now, <laughs> because the shampoos. He had a bunch of. He and his roommate. They were doing a comedy show at the Flamingo, and they were staying at a place near where Tupac got killed, I think. And uh, they, uh, they had all these stolen hotel shampoos, and they were like a little choir of angels singing to me. I'm like, "I'm cool. I'm just singing with the shampoos." And Jason's like. All right. See you. I was Come trying. To, I was trying to tee up like a fancy, like uh, like a clever. I knew what you were doing. Right. I know what you're doing. Who, who else did you do mushrooms with? Will Forte. <laughs> Will Forte is one of the biggest fucking pussies in the world. He would never do drugs. He would never do it. If he were here and Jason Sudeikis were here, they would both fucking kick your ass or be uh, uh, mad. Let's or... bring out Jason Sudeikis and Will Forte. <laughs> Thank you. What a hey, Will, I'm, reception. I'm, I'm sorry about the whole pussy remark thing, man. That's all right. Okay, I feel bad yeah, about okay. that. He didn't know you were here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you look a lot tougher now, Will, with the shaved head thing. You, you look much more like a, you yeah. might kick my ass for real. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's yeah. half the battle, just looking yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. Is this the are, are, are you still shooting Last Man on Earth this season's Last Man on Earth? No, we finished uh, a couple months ago, so we start writing on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. So you yeah. actually sit in the writer's room like full services, but you can't. That's at a certain point. There's overlap, right? You can't. You there's I, there's overlap. So so at the so then I at that point we do the acting all day, and then I got to write at nights and no, on weekends. That's not true. Come on. That, no, no. I, I don't mean that to be like you're lazy. Literally. Uh, acting in a scene and I'm acting in a scene with them and it's like okay cut we're going to turn around we I go this way because our chairs and the food's like over this way Will goes this way and then there's a laptop open and like works on it like on the laptop the whole time because I was like I was like yeah I'll do the show like you know like <laughs> it'll be fun to like hang out with you and act with you and it was like it was like oh, we only got to pretend to hang out yeah. I mean yeah. we got paid 
But then you left, and then you went to go do his his, his other job. Like literally during the day. That's pretty remarkable. I work nuts. very it's hard. Amazing. I'm a very hard worker. <laughs> it's incredible. It, he really is. It's are you, are you writing? Will uh, are you writing that episode? Or are you writing future episodes? Are you freestyling as he's you he's rewriting episodes that that have already aired? He's nuts. <laughs> Yeah. He's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, but also diff- different shows. He's doing two two seven episodes. Oh, yeah. Improving yeah. them though. All of them better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jack A has never been sassier. <laughs> is this alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> who's who's yeah, where's who's, that coming oh, from? Do you, do, you want, do you want to drink? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Drink that one. No, that's all uh, right. It, uh, who's who's running uh, Last Man on Earth? It, 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 it's uh, Andy Bobro and and uh, who you know uh, very Community. well, and and Eric Durbin now is coming in uh, to co show run. So oh, okay, because so, yeah. Bobro, you finally figured out he's a fucking he's the worst. He's not good. <laughs> no, he's fantastic. I he's love fantastic. him so much. He's I mean I, I, I every I was talking to uh, Monica Patrick, an old community writer. We were at the uh, hotel having brunch, and we were just everybody's scattered to the to the eighty five winds now. <laughs> Out. There's a community person everywhere because we did six seasons, and I'm sure some of them are like, I'm sure they all hate me, but 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 I'm sure also some of them. But what I, I I like like is I'm nostalgic about just like the family of it all. Like you like yeah. at each season, it's like, oh man, season three was great. We had so and so and such and such, and then see, it, I was looking at the Yahoo season and even thinking, I don't know what I'm explaining to you. I, it's just I no, just that that that, that that it's the expanse of it after it all sort of. It's the same way at SNL or like even when I watch TV and I bore uh, Olivia with like, oh. I did Second City with that guy in that commercial. Mm-hmm. It's like when it's like us. I would say like even me, you, and Jeff. We've known each other for twenty plus years. That idea of like, I guess that's the feeling of family. Like like like. But, but, well, that's what that's why grandparents are like. It'd be nice to hear from you once in a while because they're they're like they only run two shows <laughs> in their life <laughs> for like thirty seasons each. You know, yeah. as like a mother and a grandmother, and then they're like, we nice to see you. How did you guys meet the first time then? At the, the three of you, comedy sports in uh, Kansas City. Actually, there, there was yeah, because Dan was Milwaukee comedy sports, Jason was Kansas City, I was L.A., and Rob is obviously a Milwaukee, and we met. Obviously, <laughs> Just but, look but, at me. Look at you. Were at, look at you, how Milwaukee. You is. weren't at that tournament, I don't think. Were you at Kansas City? I don't think I was invited. There was a Kansas City tournament. <laughs> you were probably invited. You're I like, was probably. Invited. Everyone's allowed to go. Everybody's allowed to go. But like. <laughs> <laughs> you guys became an 80s mattress commercial for a second. Uh, Serta, Serta, Springer, Springer. A galaxy of savings, galaxy of savings. <laughs> but like, J- Jason, you were, you were in a group with our friend Jeremy Carter, who's in Super Ego. And like, yep. like, we, we all, like every, not every city, but a lot of the cities in comedy sports, when we went to a tournament, there were kind of the younger yeah. crew that we all kind of circled around each other and became friends and we all like have remained friends it's really it's really crazy we all were kind of annoyed at our bosses I mean blessed all their hearts but like right. like but I but I remember there's name always names. that thing name names James Bailey Clancy Hathaway and Dick Chud now mm. yeah like I know all their names I remember their names <laughs> Teen, teenage anger doesn't go away that quick <laughs> <laughs> They're still making money so, off so, it. So, yeah, we, 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 we would all just like talk shit about our kind of bosses. What yeah. kind of shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were just never they were just never doing anything right in our minds. Yeah, we the were, bosses. We were we were we were twenty two and we were like do it. We were so funny and we, like like oh so and so is it you know paying us twenty dollars a show doesn't give us gas money and yeah. you know, like doesn't he know how to run a thing and they they they, they didn't. They but were, no, but they were great. The, we wouldn't have all met each other. Yeah. We wouldn't have met the friends. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I have to be the boss. I wouldn't have got on whose line if I didn't do ten years of short form improv. Like, right. like, like that was a school for that. Yeah. Uh, but we all eventually said fuck this shit and like moved on. Yeah. And I'm not an actor, but of course, as a writer and producer, comedy sports gave me all my people skills. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it, it helps you <laughs> when you're dealing with the network. <laughs> I would have been a real oh, bad knows? apple in their yeah. eyes if who I knows? hadn't learned to say yes and to every fucking idiot. <laughs> They still still don't like me, uh, but uh, the, the um, was that well I don't know. So let's talk about let's talk about writer actor hybrids because you're talking about well I just don't even I mean I really want to get my head around that because I'm having pings of insane jealousy there with the idea of you being on set 
having having sold a show, created it, developed it, and now you're on the set and you're still running over to the laptop like I'm I've got such a man crush on you for that like like <laughs> r- 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 like and and just <laughs> I, I, I because I, I I told you this would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are I you didn't really... know that I would meet somebody <laughs> <laughs> in a in a in, in the scene that he's describing. Are you? Uh... <laughs> Is what's on the laptop uh, like scenes that are about to shoot that week, or is it like a, a, a next episode? No, we we will uh, uh, every once in a while you'll get into a case where you're you're writing stuff uh, for stuff that week, but but usually it's jamming out the stuff that's coming the the following week. Um, I mean, ideally you're you're to a place where you get this stuff. All settled before you're even shooting. Cause I, ideally, yeah. I hate, yeah, but it does not happen all every the time. every year. It's like the first day of school. You're like, yeah. here's, here's my math notebook and my trapper keeper, and the unicorn's gonna hold the pencils, and here's my three shirts I'm gonna wear, and then two days later, it's bubble gum yeah. unfolding like like with the thing, and like I have so it. many Doogie Howser journals, like like <laughs> like either in in real writing, they're just like five strong days, and then I forget it. And go on a trip, and it's like, well, I'll never and fuck that. Like, it was, I had this one that was like, it was like a little tiny one like this. It was like, uh, write something for f- five, you know, like five years. I got it as a Christmas gift, so New Year's. All right, great. Literally went two days, went on a trip, and now it's done. And I won't. It's like I won't even pick up on it because it's like, no, if I can't do the five years straight, I'm only five months into it, six months into it. I'm like, no, it's dead to me. Sorry, blew it. You well, you squandered potential. When you got from I was I was I was with you in in I was there in Las Vegas the night we happened to be in Las Vegas. Uh, you were in Second City, Las Vegas. You right. had, you had been bumped up to the minors from comedy sports to like you were you were doing like we, there was like thirty people in the audience in this club oh, in yeah, Las yeah, Vegas, yeah. and uh, and and it was a funny improv show and um but you were you were kind of beaming and trying to keep your don draper vibe uh uh you know because you're such a, a hipster uh like and, and then, but but then quickly we were told that like the the scout from snl had been there that week or maybe that day oh i don't remember i can't i, I don't remember the exact timeline but i mean that's where yeah that's where it was the night that it was like official i think that you were going to be on snl Oh wow! That, that was, yeah. Um, then that would have been. Had I already auditioned for it? Do you remember? Um, I think they just came and scouted you. I don't know if you had auditioned. The only thing that scouted. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you got the audition. But, but it was a manager. It was a manager that saw myself and uh, um, and Kay Cannon, who I was in the cast with, and then a guy named Seamus McCarthy. And and that manager picked us all up. And then we made the guys made tapes because they were looking for guys, I think. And or at least I made a tape. And I just filmed the show basically and then sent it in. And and so I knew maybe I was gonna get to go audition. I would assume maybe at that point. But but they offered yeah. you a deal, uh, as I recall, that w- that had been there was a template for it in the past. It was like, you know, like oh, getting hired as a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, I, I yeah I went to go audition for the show and then didn't get it. Uh, but they liked me, and then I got the, like a week later. They're like, "Hey, why don't you come out again?" And this is when you like met, you meet Lauren Michaels, and it's sort of like he's just making sure you're not crazy, or like I think he said, like he wants to make sure you're someone that if you walk by in the hallway at two a.m., he wouldn't be scared or worried. Which <laughs> 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 is like it makes sense. It's his it's his gig. What do you uh, think started that rule? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, Let's say, who do you think be, made that be. happen? Either it was someone, or else it was a part of him that he didn't want to deal with. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, Come on, I, it was it was Tim Meadows. It was Tim Meadows. He's, so he's a, a hot, just a loose gu- cannon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say loose gun, hot cannon. What am I doing? <laughs> Um, but we, uh, yeah. So then, I, so then you go out there, and then I got hired as a writer, which I was a little bit like, oh, it's a. It, it, it was like, oh. Nuts, <laughs> like, which is ridiculous. But I was—I had never—I didn't send in a packet. I, I was had a, imposter syndrome, all that stuff. Um, once getting it, and then you just kind of like just say yes, and and then yeah. hope to God it all works out. And you, 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 you kind of knew that so, yeah. they, they were kind of grooming you a bit for being in the cast, right? Yeah, and that was what you're talking about. At that point, there was like there was like Tina had done it, and David Spade had done it, and Sandler had done it, and like even back in the day, Chevy did it, kind of you know to a degree. Who else? There's like everybody. Robert Schneider. Yeah, think, everybody you know? who, that had done it in the past, you know, uh, um, that been a writer and was a cast member, um, had all made that that you you sort of knew who they were. Well, they never tell you about Gorby Phillips. Yeah, never. Yeah, Gorby doesn't get his love. <laughs> he's the guy who's jo- who wanted to be an actor. They gave him a job as a writer, and yeah. he's still there. Oh, <laughs> his office is in the basement. Hilar- 
horrible writer, hilarious in the room. Yeah, hilarious in the room. <laughs> You love him in the room. You love him in there. He just he keeps I mean, people laughing. I remember Jason, like, at, like after the first season or two uh, of when you were in the cast, you would come back to L.A. and we, we like, we'd go have a drink, and you just look like you would just sit down and just dump like how difficult that job was. Like it was, Yo. it seemed like it was like. Uh, I don't but know. always making sure he was very thankful and said everyone was very <laughs> wonderful. T- Jeff, it's yeah. like Israel over yeah. there. <laughs> By design. By design. <laughs> You know, but like also like our, our friend like you know Andy Samberg like like every time I saw him he seemed to have aged about ten years. Oh, every, it's like every- the presidency in that way. Yeah, it's like <laughs> until until you sort of like develop like a niche, I, I, I think, or, or I would like with this guy to my left, like such an original sort of voice that Lauren's like, oh, this is a variety show. I need to have what Will does on there, or like the Lonely Island guys. I need to have the Lonely Island I- that generation. You know, like Kristen. I need to have. Like I need to have a Kristen track on this greatest hits. Right. You know? I, ta- <laughs> like, I talked to somebody about how Lauren has always been. That, that's always been his real secret uh, underneath it all. I think because it was back when Channel 101 was starting to be a thing, and the Lonely Island guys uh-huh. were doing Channel 101, and then all of a sudden, oh my God, they're they're taking that different path, that Schiller real uh, right. uh, 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 Mr. Bill path to right. SNL, which is a and and I, I somebody was talking to me about it. And they said, oh no, but Lauren's a genius, like um, about that in particular. That he always recognized that that you know the 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 potential obsolescence of what he was doing there and and how any one of these random asteroids or geniuses um, that would you know the, 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 the he he had this way of like like. He would he would beckon you in and say, "Look, I know what you want, and I know what you deserve, and I'm going to set you up so that you can have it." So the, yeah. lo- if the, lo- you want the Lonely it. Island were getting their their card that said it's an SNL digital short, like that's their property. He right. knew he knew that about Smigel. He knew he understood that there there that you can't create an army of generals. You have to like give them like the, you have to cr- yeah, yeah. let them have the illusion that they have their own world. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, it's true. I, I would say that he is he is good at that. You have to earn that though. How far into a, like Will, Will, him. And, Will and Jason like how far like along when you were a cast member was it when you found like okay, this is my niche. This is my this is my thing. Like did that take a while or because you, you, I remember, like at one point, you guys were just my favorite. Like that, that cast was really good, and you two together, especially. Because I went to one of the tapings, and you guys doing that, uh, your mustached uh, ESPN three oh, yeah, yeah. kind of characters, was fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, but like, was it was? Did it take a while to find your stride and find like like when you go, okay, this is my shit. Like I, this is what I do. It, I mean, it, it depends for everybody because I I. Uh would always kind of do weirder stuff and and it's hard to to get that stuff on so so you have to kind of build up this trust and i was uh uh they it would kill on wednesdays ps it, like the read through it was like it, every time like you see cuz at the top of the every script it's the writers names so like you'd see like you know Faye and polar or like if it said forte you were just kind of like you know, even if it was, you'd been there five hours, you're like, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, and, and especially when you were writing with Sloven and Allen, like there was this there, there was this ironing, sharpening iron thing that was brewing there uh, that I don't think really kicked in to Jeff's question, like until maybe our group came in. Because I felt like just watching it from the outside, your stuff started to get that that play, like after you stopped playing Bush, really. Oh, for sure. I, I was, you know, I, I it was an honor to to play Bush, but it was an honor I did not want. It was, you know, uh, and then I ended up you know, playing Will, it. Will Ferrell had just, had know, just done it's it. Like, it's like, what are we doing? It, it was, you know, to me, it's like Dana Carvey doing The Church Lady. Like, yeah. like Bush, it, it, Will right. Ferrell had turned Bush into a character that was right. so... One, flat out won in the election. Won in the election. Ruined our country for eight years by his <laughs> his talent, his so charm. Has, you can't have you know Dana Carvey would not leave, and then somebody else come in and do the church lady. Right. So, but you have to do the president. Right. So, so I you know somehow became that guy, and I was shitty at it. Was, <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> at the beginning, so, you no, know, when he was all whiny, like you were great at it because you were like, oh man, and he well, was like. I, <laughs> It certainly and then he was changed. not. It was not the kind of stuff I like to do. And you know, I was, I was. It was a fun adventure, but, but like, it, that the, the cast was so big at the time that that like a lot of times I would, I would be putting out the kind of stuff that I liked. Right. But, but you know, you got to service everybody. So I would you got get your these sketch push five things minutes. that were in there that that it weren't necessarily my thing, and and that would be the thing 
for that episode. So, like, for a couple of years, I was just kind of the Bush guy and didn't really get to do. But there was also really this. I don't remember who told me about this, but then I started looking for it. That in those years, there was closer to midnight. It was like, okay, these. Like, like I always tried to, to figure out the formula with the last sketch on SNL. It was right. like sometimes it was clearly just the shittiest. So, <laughs> so, 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 sometimes it was one that like I don't. I, I have no idea. You yeah, guys yeah. could tell me, and maybe for political reasons you wouldn't even be able to, or, or it would take too long, or there is no formula. But yeah. but then somebody told me like watch the. But sometimes it's like these like weird pieces of esoteric brilliance. Um, these like just just good good quality sketches um, that were and, and it was Forte's name that was like like attached to that. They were go like, oh that's a there, there's a some you gotta watch till midnight because you might there might be a Forte sketch coming because yeah, they're yeah. putting them there not because they don't believe in them, but because um, like the spelling like a sketch. hidden yeah like a the, hidden track. The, wasn't that that's, that, was, that was what I was gonna say was the episode that where I felt like it all kicked in. Uh, the, was Jack Black hosting the Christmas episode of what happened to be, uh, oddly enough, my generation's first season? I was lucky to be there too. I years. was there. You were there. Yeah. So you had you had you had Jack Black kicking ass his second time hosting, singing an amazing King Kong opener. Then you have um, then you have uh, there was the fr- um, with uh, Wig and I the first a holes, two a holes buying a Christmas tree. You had Christmas time for the Jews, uh, a short thing, uh, a short amazing short film uh, parody by uh, Smigel. You had Spelling Bee with 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 Forte, and then most importantly, I would say most iconically, Lazy Sunday. Yeah. Uh, right. By Lonely Island, that and that was just night? like that was all boom. one episode. Was, it gives me goosebumps. Or was that one about season? Yeah. One episode. That was really? that was Christmas episode of two thousand. Oh, so that must be why I was watching it because like my friends were like like oh my god they had just gone up. I was at the party where they and Bill Hader was also yeah, yeah. alongside them was like being sent up in a balloon to New York. Absolutely, like goodbye yeah. guys. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I must have been watching that night, going oh this is the first or yeah, then maybe it was Jack, just because of the Lazy Sunday thing because they had done stuff before that and Lazy Sunday was kind of their. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but but the spelling bee thing, I just want to talk about oh. for a second. The sketch, the spelling bee sketch. I'm sure if you just type it into YouTube, who knows, or somebody just find it. Uh, it simply judges at a spelling bee, saying, "All right, your next word is <laughs> what's the next word? Business. Business." <laughs> and then the entire sketch from front to back is Will Forte incorrectly spelling business, <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole sketch. He doesn't. He doesn't finish like you know. And then they go, "Oh, that's not quite right. Why don't you try a simpler word like cat?" And then he does it three times. And then in the end, he spells a really complicated word really well. And then you're done. <laughs> the entire sketch is him failing to spell the word business. And it's not a short sketch. It's it's a, it's conehead size. It's 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 a proper size, a hungry man Jack sketch size. But the whole meal is is <laughs> him. It's just. Different letters. Q, Q, Q. How many times do you say Q? Q. Were you doing Nine, numbers yeah. at one point, like adding numbers into it? Was there, uh, uh, th- that was that was a hard one to get on because yeah. it was. Uh, I had done it at the Groundlings a bunch of times, but it, killing it, 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 killing it, it at the Groundlings always would go very well at the Groundlings. But you did but, it. You did it at SNL. It wouldn't get picked. You would do it at like Smigel would have you do Night of Too Many Stars. You'd play like Radio City Music Hall and do it. It would crush. And then he would put it at the table, or wherever you guys were doing those, the, where he would ask you to do it at a benefit. It yeah. would crush, and he'd bring it back to like you know seventeenth floor, like you know fifty you know people watching. Everybody's just like, it's killing, but everybody's like, it's never going to get on, and it wasn't. <laughs> well, I got to hand like Jack Black was the one who really pushed yeah. it forward because he you know he's he is great and he's such a, a champion of, of Dude, comedy and, and just really like it. Forte. If it wasn't for him, yeah, if it he wasn't pick- for him, it wouldn't have gotten on. So what, what's that Same like? With when, when you write, like, like, when you wrote a really weird sketch that was kind of esoteric and strange, and you go into that read through where everybody's, you know, you got the piles of paper, all the all, all the scripts that are just you know, reading through everything. Do you have to get, get up and really perform that, like at the table? Like you really have to sell that to the room, right? Oh yeah, I mean, most of the time you're you're just sitting down. Every every once in a while, if there's uh, something with a little more action, you might stand up and, yeah. and do some of the stuff. But you you know you you do a pretty full out. 
You do. Here's something that maybe no one thinks. To, I, I, the, what, what does the writers' room look like when you're at SNL? At, at, at the, it's like an office. It's like a like a conference room like a vibe. It's like it's almost so it's like a the big commons. table. Everyone sitting it's a big, around it. Big but table. Then it's on the outer wall. Is everybody? Yeah, sitting them. around the tables. All the cast and, and and depending on how many there are. Like right now, there's probably not much elbow room. It got to a point when we were there that there was like a nice amount of room. So the cast is around the table, and then there's and a at the head uh, at the head of the table is Lauren and and the host. And then cast, 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 cast. Then or around this side, like if you were looking down at three o'clock, is like Seth and uh, one of the assistant directors, Janine, who times every sketch. One of the producers, Steve Higgins. Um, somebody else. But then around the sides are like the department heads. All the writers are, are like at, at nine o'clock behind here, like four rows deep. People are sometimes sleeping because they've been up since. Okay, 10 so this is okay. So this is a room where there's a table at the. You're describing a right that. Uh, this is a table read. Table read. Uh, yes. What, what does the like? What about just uh, the w- the room in which uh, people are pitching sketches and? It mostly happens in offices. Yeah, they, it's, and it's, it's just, like a disparate. normal office building with just a more open fart policy. <laughs> it, it looks like Thirty Rock. I mean, it looks like that's. I mean, you know, like the TV show. I mean. But when yeah. you're a writer and you, yeah. uh, uh, so are you sitting like? Like when you think, are you sitting cross-legged on a carpeted floor with a with a sheaf of papers in front of you, with notes scribbled on them, yeah. waiting your turn to pitch something? Yes, on Mondays with the host, there's the host meeting, the pitch meeting. You go, everybody lines up, and we all sit in Lauren's office. Some people on chairs, like humans. Other people hey, on the Jason, ground. Have you told Have you told it too many times on too many shows? But the, your Snoop Dogg story would that, would that be a pain to, for, to retell? Because I, I retell your Snoop Dogg story <laughs> when you were a writer. All yeah, time. you know, I remember. Yeah, the um, no, I mean, I could, I mean, I, I don't mind telling. It's, 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 it's a, a good life philosophy. <laughs> it really um, is. But yeah, um, we were on Tuesday nights. The, the host goes around whoever it is, and they meet with the different writers. And well, this was it was actually I think it was your office at the time. You were rooming with Tellerico, Rich Tellerico at that oh, yeah, point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it was me and uh, Rich Tellerico, uh, and and I think you might have maybe been in there if not, pitching ideas to Snoop. I, I just love Rich's ideas so much that I always feel obligated to put him in here. Uh, he's tell Snoop. Snoop's just sitting there like this, and he's like, uh, I have this idea where you play a dad, but you know that scene like at the dinner table when the kid mouth is off and he takes off the belt? You don't take off your belt. Your job is you're, you make a living as a beekeeper, so you slowly start to put on your beekeeper outfit <laughs> <laughs> to intimidate your kids. And, and, and I swear to God, Snoop's like, like, yeah, yeah, I like that, I like that. Yeah. I want this guy to be real scientifical about the bees. You know what I mean? Like I want him to know, I want him to know what's going on inside of a bee's mind. Like, literally, he's saying that. Other things, blah blah blah. He, uh, we're playing music. We're playing music. Uh, riches. He's got these speakers in there, and he's and he's blaring like Snoop Dogg hits. And he's like, "Yeah, see, I put a cover on every album because you gotta look backward before you look forward." Like he would just talk like this. He would just say, just, "Yeah." Yeah, man. Like, Urban Outfitters, I was always said, you just follow him around with a pad and pen and be like, we're making pillows, T-shirts. This is like, <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, and then at the end, Rich, and, I, you know, I, I mean, I was just observing this. Rich is really the point guard of this entire narrative. But he, he, Rich goes, uh, Snoop, after the party on Saturday, uh, we got we to gotta kick in. Snoop says, swear to God, for shizzle. He says, because this is at the height, for shizzle. And he goes, uh, and Rich, for whatever reason, goes, uh, maybe we'll get... Maybe we'll get a uh, we'll get a hoe, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Snoop just goes, "Why well, get only one hoe?" <laughs> right? That he he could have he could have stopped there. He could have stopped there and let me draw my own conclusion. Let us all sort of be like, "What does he mean by that?" You know, like he, but he do He goes on. He goes, uh, <laughs> "Don't put limits on your life." <laughs> Again, you're kind of like. That's it. He can get up and leave now. Yeah. The Urban Outfitters person could close their moleskin and be like, okay, yeah. we got next week's shirt. We're good. And he goes, why get only one hoe? Why not get, why not get two or three? I'm sorry. Don't put limits on your life. And then he says, dream big. Uh, dream big and you may never wake up. <laughs> like that's, I, I don't know if he said it since. I don't know if he remembers saying it. 
Did you uh, did you run and write it down? Because no, I've just told it so many like uh, a good it, joke. Uh, I've just told it so many times, like because I, 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 find I remember it. you telling me that, and we're like, "That's your Leno story." I think you told it on Leno. Or I told it on Conan, Conan the first the yeah, first like, like talk show like, I did. Like, yeah. like, like you, you you're like, "Oh, I have my Conan story." Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's given me this. Like I got this, you know. So what I, is this a sacrilegious great. question? Uh, 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 you, you guys are writer. Uh, it does God exist? The, the uh, <laughs> Uh, the the and would he like Jewish people? Uh, um, yeah, the, you assume so. It's, uh, the the oh, I made the Israel comment earlier. Now I have to counterbalance that. I got to remember some anti-Christian shit. I, uh, like, I, it's, you, out it's out there. That, that war is still happening, right? Jews versus Christians. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get mixed up in that. Um, what uh, whoa, 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 you you guys are both writers. You're both performers. Um, <laughs> You, 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 uh, Forte, you were in the... I love this question. Yeah, right? <laughs> you were in the... Wait till the... he gets to the end of it. It's <laughs> you helped him write this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> been working all day on this question. <laughs> we have a mutual friend, Jim Rash. You were in Groundlings with him, right? Yeah, that was your yes, class. Yes. Like, like, he's a writer, director. He's an Oscar-winning writer and, uh, uh director. Uh, uh, I think he is directing and uh, the actor. Writer and actor. The, um, the... Writer actors are better actors than regular actors, um, and uh, don't don't comment on that because I'm sh- I'm sure you have actor friends. Um, b- but uh, what I w- wanted to ask is like, wh- what are you more? I don't know. I you know, the question is, what are you more? <laughs> Do you think of yourself when you're standing on set as an actor, like, okay, I'm doing this acting job, but I'm a writer, or is it the other way around? Well, I, I started off as a writer, so I, I think I'll always think of myself as more of a writer. Uh, uh, I, at the end of my third year... You wrote year, before you did Groundlings? Uh, yeah, I, well... Mm-hmm. Eh. I, did, I did go I mean, through I'm, your. I, yeah, I was. I was. I didn't. I wasn't writing professionally. We could go through your past for was, a second here because it's kind of interesting. Writer. I bothered yeah. to Wikipedia you crazy. when I heard you might be coming by, and the most notable thing first is your name is your your given name is Orville Or- Wilbert. Orville Willis. Orville Willis Forte, Forte, the, Forte the, fourth. the fourth. Yes, I've never met a yes. fourth before. I know it's uh, you know. I, I, it's, Are you it's making fun cool. of his name? No, I'm making fun of He's America. We've it. never had a fourth generation of anything here. <laughs> Everything around you is 20 years old, ar- architecturally. That's made of rock. Like this is a flesh thing uh, made of four four strings of dude. That's <laughs> that's European, man. That's yeah. heavy shit. We, we got our episode title. Uh, uh, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> we have a titular moment. <laughs> we have had our moment. Um, I will say there was a there was a, a, when I first I, I, I wrote on sitcoms for a while. I wrote at Letterman, wrote at uh, th- uh, Third Rock from the Sun, uh, seventy show. Then got the SNL job, and there it, it I definitely was had more of a writer's mentality because I would be I'd go in and when when I would uh, act my own stuff, I would I, I would. Stuff that I had written, I, I would feel very confident. In it. I'd know exactly what to do, and I would get into my head with because uh, I'd remember if I would write stuff and uh, you know sitting back there as other people would do it and just going, hey, uh, okay, do it the way I wanted it, and and it'd be very you know, and and so in my head as I was doing other people's things, I would just be thinking about how upset they were about the choices I was making. So at the end of the third season at SNL. Uh, over the summer, there there was this really uh, the cast was very big. Lauren was thinking about making changes, and and there's a date in July when you're supposed to be told whether your option is picked up. And they had Independence Day. <laughs> yeah. No. no. And uh, <laughs> and they held off on picking up my option, and and it took an extension, and and for like six weeks I had to wait. And and the final conversation I had with him was what he he said. You know, you are thinking too much like a writer. You need to own it a little more. And of course, I'm like, oh fuck, this old man. He has no idea. <laughs> and, and, and I love was, this character. But, but I come back, and, and and the more I thought about it, he was absolutely right. I was just like, I would be too nervous about uh, performing in other people's things. And so mm-hmm. once I, he, he just, you know, he gave me the best advice of all time, which was just to go in there and and make 
the character is your own in other let people's things. And we'll just let her rip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and thank God he he let me come back, and that really was like. You know, knowing that I had almost been saying, fired, like, it all felt like gravy, and then it was just like, okay, fuck it. He's like, look, if these writers uh, knew better than actors, they'd be actors. Like, they, <laughs> they, they're, they're so smart, but they can't act. Like, you, you come in, take their stuff, and take it to the, take it to the end zone. Where, yeah, and your experience had been as a writer. I would, I would like, sometimes get their stuff down to, like, the 25. <laughs> you know, and, and but Suds, you're probably a little more complicated, right? Because you're not quite as. I mean, he was a writer forever, and you're like you're you're you were an improviser, which is right. half and half already. You're like a golden doodle, right? But <laughs> but you're. You're also, yeah. we call Jason Suds. <laughs> yeah, P.S. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but your, pa- your, your, so your your passion was for performing originally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so and then they're saying to you, "Well, yeah, but you're a writer, right?" And they're putting you in the writer's room. So oh. when you're uh, when you're in front of a camera right. or or on a uh, pink and seafoam poster with three starlets, oh. and then your face, oh. like, in yeah, the part of my face. <laughs> They, they put. They added some stuff to my face, and eyebrows. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, but I know what you mean. When, when, when you're when you're studding it up in front of the unblinking yeah. you're, you're, eye, you're, over the shoulder. Your yeah. beard. Your beard in the Mother's Day poster is really great. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, you, like it's what, like Drake density. It's like it's like. <laughs> It's a healthy, healthy. I, I, my I, eyebrows, like when I look at, it, I go, I wish. I, I, I told you, who knows where I'd be if I looked I, like that. <laughs> it's like a little kid's hobo costume. Yeah, like, yeah. They, like, really like there's, is. there's stippling involved. I, I like, texted Jason a, uh, like a picture of that poster. I said, please, I don't know what this movie's about, but please tell me that you're a high-priced male hustler. <laughs> yeah. And your your eyebrows have their own beards. Like that's. <laughs> It's, it's you're, you're 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 made of beards in that. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's. It, I'm I'm with you. When I saw it, I was just like, yeah. I mean, it was, you know. Whatever. That's so great. So yeah. are, so are you an actor that ha- that 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 has used your extra ability to write to? Uh, to yeah, uh, I think so. I would say I would really? say so. I, I I do. I mean, I I there's there's such a, for me like with acting like not that anybody cares, but like since you're sort of asking about it. Like uh, of like the left brain, right brain. Like I, I think I, I'm I'm envious of of actors that can really just like just like be in it. I feel like I can get there because, but my left brain's always working. The part of you that has to hit a mark, the part of you that has to like know where the light is and all that kind of stuff. Especially like tracking shots, all all that stuff I can handle really well. Though, and I think that comes from like playing basketball as a kid, like running mm. plays and stuff. Like it's like so sports a, sports come back around to haunt me. Uh, we, no, but, <laughs> But I think it could have happened with like any any sort of group mentality. I just didn't have like um you know the, uh, the group of kids that in in my neighborhood they played sports they didn't put on plays. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and I don't mean that as a smart ass because I know there are neighborhoods like that, and I was sure, lucky sure. to meet those ki- kind of kids in high school. But like, it, so I'm like always cognizant of like what's what is needed to happen to make it like like at least not have to uh, cut because of some. Mal, like physical mal- malfunction, you know. Like that brings up an interesting question, Forte. Hey, do you, when you're, you're writing for yourself, and that means, to a powerful degree, you're blocking yourself. Like, like a director could come in and say, "No, I think you should be in the doorway." Sorry, I burped. It's gross. You, you, I think you should be in the doorway, and then you should you should do a somersault. And sometimes directors have great ideas, and sometimes they're just directors. But the uh, the, the you, you you first and foremost, if you're writing a scene. <laughs> It's how you respond to that sentence that says more about anything. You know what I mean? I'm sure it was very visual, whatever's yeah. going on down there. Well, but it he... doesn't tell a story at the end of the day. <laughs> in, in Rob's mind... We need both. We need both. Ro- Rob is drawing a storyboard of him killing you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... So... Doing a bird's eye of taking a shit on his car. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... Oh, God. I, I, I wish directors doing did bird's eyes. Doing a shot list of peeing in your uh, drink. Uh... <laughs> You, you're um, you say, you 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 have a specific brain. I mean, you're like 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 you are you. So you're here. You're this guy that's going like you're kind of like oh, I I want this joke to land, et cetera, et cetera. I won't repeat the process that you took us through. But then you're on a laptop, so you're writing that a character that's going to be played by you, and you. Uh, I guess the, the small part of my question is like, do you do things like um? Mitigate your your blocking in the scene. Do you go like, look, I don't want to do a bunch of complicated shit in this scene because I'm gonna start 
uh, I'm only going to be funny if I'm able to sit still and like remember my lines or, or, or are you like, no, I need to occupy myself, anything like that. Like, do you, do you, do you knowing yourself as a performer when you're writing, do you write specific things well, for yourself? Certainly you will write to your strengths. Uh, but, but every once in a while there'll be things that bring you outside your comfort zone. If, if you get together, uh, together with the writers and they all, think it's a great idea and you think all right let's fucking go for it you know it's it 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 really is uh but for the most part you can you can really you'll know the stuff you're good at and not very good at and you kind of stick with the the stuff you're good at i think all that stuff literally comes down to like trust of of you know like literally like like where i'm gonna be i'll ask i'll be asked to do this like me staying in my head i don't think is necessarily healthy like all the time, as as w- even though I feel connected more as a uh, actor than a writer, the part of me that doesn't let me get out of my head is probably not giving the person directing me uh, the majority of the time enough trust to just be out of my own head to maybe have an assessment of it. But I don't in the middle of of a scene. It's only like lo- when looking at the sides or, or thinking about it. If they suggest something, I'll be like, oh no. So I think like with stuff, you would have stuff in your head in scenes that we would do, and then we would sort of talk about stuff, and maybe it would feel. You're always very accommodating. It's not like you're rigid and like I wrote it this way, so it has to be this way. Oh yeah, and, and and if and if there's ever a director that wants to try something that's different than what I was thinking, it's it's always somebody yeah. like Jason Wallner who knows his shit, mm-hmm. and, and John Solomon, yeah. our you know best buddy, and and uh, you know these these wonderful people who are super smart and and you throw you know, a bro- that's bro- the, bone that's to Rob Schraub for you know just for yeah, get him in there next uh, year. Schraub, Schraub, I'm sure is great. Yeah? yeah, like, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I've always, uh, I've never, well I've, well, I've had what you've had, which is like, you write something, you hear it a certain way in your head, and it would be great if they did it exactly that way. Sometimes it's right in the bubble where you're trying to figure out, do I just want to hear this the way it was in my head? Am I objectively hearing it, like, so I can decide, actually, oh, that's, that's funny. No. Uh, the, <laughs> Then there's the then there's the getting past that. There's the oh, someone please help me with this. And if a director can think of a, a better blocking, and sometimes you know, um, like 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 Heath uh, Cullen's on, on Great Minds, will like 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 I'll have a very basic thing in my head, and then he'll go, yeah, but what if what if the person was sitting behind the doorway, and then you entered, so then we could get, all get it in one shot. I like all these different shaped brains, and they all overlap. And uh, I'm sure Rob's great at something. The um, <laughs> The, uh, I, 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 just I told rem- you he wouldn't have fun. I just remembered something that. Uh, we, so we finished. I, I think I, I need a table next time. Next time I'm on the show. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do with that table? <laughs> Nothing, I guess. Maybe you could use it to uh, distant. Or oh, fuck. <laughs> Maybe you can use it to stutter and emotionally distance yourself from the people on stage. It, it, is, it is so weird. We bring Spencer out first, and he sits in the corner, and we never talk to him. Yeah. For, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, and minutes. now you're bringing me out. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I was slowly. Hey, fill look. the stage full of people who don't talk. To no, me. and I, well, and, and, and it's our fault. I, you second. guys were all kicking in before we got out here. It's all good. I just don't know anything about comedy or directing or you know those things you guys are talking about. But, but, right. But that's otherwise, not... you could be sure I'd be in there with barbs and jabs and bits. <laughs> Why don't we talk about barbs? Oh, man. You want to talk about barbs for yeah. a second? Can we do a, a, a little barb corner? Yeah, Barb Thomas. Jesus Christ. Adrian Barbo. There we go. Yep. <laughs> hey, Barb's Jason. In there. Barb uh, is in there. Barb. Uh, Jason, you brought, you brought up basketball earlier. You and I... Yeah. No! No, no, no. This is... <laughs> no, no. This is, this is more about comedy than about sports. Jason and I... Jason grew up in Kansas... Correct. And you used to play with some dudes from the Jayhawks, right? The, like from the, from the team? Like, sure. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, so, yeah. And Jason Sudeikis, this dude can play basketball. He's really good. Well, not compared to those guys. But yeah, but, 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 but you can But compared play. to everybody probably here, I would say I'd... <laughs> I can get rebounds. But also, like, you, 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 you love your high-top basketball shoes. I do love to them. To the nice extent shoe. that you're, we went to your house, you got oh. a room, you got a whole walk-in closet that's just for your high-top basketball shoes, mm-hmm. which is... There's low tops too. You got. I mean, with that much room, you got to have low tops too. Do you have any medium tops? Three quarter tops. Yeah, I'm wearing some. 
It's Damn, like a, those tops are three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding. Look at those so, tops. Yeah, those so, tops. Go all the way up. So yeah. Jason and I... <laughs> and they don't go all the way down either. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of like... Split the difference, tops. They can't make a choice. Those, top, those tops split the difference. Mm-hmm. Between the high and the low. <laughs> those are some Wednesday tops. <laughs> 50% of the tops. So Jason and I went to go play basketball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we went to Just a... Uh, justifying... We went to a, here. a basketball Turned court. Bill Cosby at the end. <laughs> these are, those are some Wednesday tops. <laughs> those are those tops are completely. Those tops are. I'm telling you, Camille. Those tops are halfway up the ankle. That's not funny anymore. <laughs> no, it's not. No, oh, it, right. is. it is. It, it is. is actually. It is. It really is. <laughs> it's getting the fact, funnier. The fact that we're not talking about why it isn't funny yeah, is yeah. making it really funny. <laughs> and you went with Camille. Uh, yeah. It's really funny. Uh. <laughs> so Jason and I go play a pickup game in West Hollywood, like yep. on San Vicente, and I played there before, and uh, it's it's a pretty intense like pickup basketball game and some of the guys there talk a lot of trash it's a lot of like a lot of big mouths and it's usually the guys that aren't that good that are talking the most trash oh and isn't I, that isn't that just the truth isn't that <laughs> so I missed my free throw you gotta make a free throw to get in the game I missed my free throw Jason gets on a oh, team so I'm just shit. chilling and Jason I think you matched up against one of the biggest loud mouths on, on the opposing team I usually do and Jason had the funniest shit talk of all time he kept scoring on this dude, and every time he'd come down the court, he would say, do you know that they call me the electrician? Like he, would ha- he would have a new occupation. <laughs> so he'd be dribbling the ball, and the guy hated him so much. He's like, they call me the electrician, and he'd shoot it. He goes, because I'm putting the lights out. It was... What, what, what were the other ones? Uh, the, I'm sure the waiter. What was the waiter? Like, uh, we dropping... Di- uh, no, 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 the waiter was uh, serving up funky dishes. <laughs> 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 there, there was the plumber. Cl- plumber. Clumsy cashier was 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 drop was dropping dimes. <laughs> like stuff like that. I like that you can be so good at basketball yeah. that you become uh, bad at another job. Yeah. Yeah. They call me the terrible mailman because I'm I'm not bringing anything to you. <laughs> get out of my diner. Go play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I said get. <laughs> But I remember the other team. The I'm other such a terrible janitor at this diner. I should be mayor. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't sniff that out, right? Yeah. What book did What book did he read that made him think he could be mayor Hill, Hill Valley? But, but there was a point when you were you were pissing off that guy that yeah. even his own teammates were laughing at him because you kept clowning him and it was the greatest. I, I, really I just good. remembered one thing from the mushroom uh, adventure after my. <laughs> After my hand was laid on the uh, surface of the water and I communed with all life, like Co- Cody was back in the in the in the in the bungalow, like rolling around on the bed because it was soft. And I and then I went and it was, we, 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 we we made the mistake of trying all kinds of things and uh, and, then, and then and then but you don't need to know about that or or, or picture it. But I kind of want to know. I want to know everything about. I want to know a little bit about that. But there was a point I wrote down the quote. Uh, like well, kind of just b- both individually, kind of rolling around because like the this for me the ceiling was like a pool and the there was like I, I might fall in it if I close my eyes, and then uh, Cody said, uh, "I want a baby," Uh-oh. or maybe, or maybe I just want a soft bathrobe. <laughs> and she should have the right to make that choice. No, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> that, is, that, right? that is a woman's decision. All right, guys. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the two, though, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's, it's that kind of J- Jason. Can we talk about this? The first time that I ever did it. Uh, are you okay talking the mushrooms? About it? Yeah. Yeah, what do you mean, like like yeah. sponsors and stuff? Yeah. Like my AA sponsors? Exactly. Yeah, the, the, no, the I'm fr- fine with it. The first time I ever did Mushrooms was, what was your, your friend's name? Mike, Mike. Mike. Mike Lucas. And the three of us, we did it, and we went to your apartment, and it was, am I correct yeah. in saying that it was right on the intersection where Tupac was murdered, right? Yeah, Flamingo and Koval, yeah. Yeah. They'd cleaned it up since then, but yeah, it was, 
<laughs> yeah, that's where it was. So, the Meridian there was, was little, the name of the. There was a little ritual that you guys put me through at the beginning. We we, we like chopped up the stems and the caps, and there was some little vehicle, like a little choo choo train or a little. Pick- that was all improvised. Like that was that was Mike being stoned before I think on mushrooms. <laughs> And just a very like creative so, guy. So we, there was like a little like wheelbarrow or choo choo. We created train. like a little like a little um, uh, altar kind of thing, yeah. ceremonial. And you had altar. to make a wish, and you had to push the choo choo train with the mushrooms. Yeah, in it. I and remember if that. it fell over, that was good luck or bad luck. <laughs> oh yeah, that all makes sense. Why do we even need these drugs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? We're fine. So we're fine. Do zip zap zop and hit the town. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. So three. Yeah, when you're that desperate to have a good time together, you probably. Will. Well, that's all you need. <laughs> Axe body spray. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so for some reason, we do, we do something really not intuitive. We all go to the Hard Rock Casino, yeah. which is just a bunch of assholes. Oh, my God. The but worst. we stood there in the circle bar in the middle of the casino. And I remember the three of us. Why is it called the circle bar? It's a great question. It's a good question. Fair question. Yep. Uh, because it was named after Jonathan Circle. <laughs> Who discovered it while yeah, chasing yeah, a bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a circular bar in the middle of the, of the casino, which is also circularly shaped. Didn't we end up calling it like the Shark's Nest or something? We had some weird name for it. Yeah, because well, we I, I had this in, like we stood there like like a little triangle facing at each other. the circle bar. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like like three Something's squares. Something's wrong with this picture. But people kept coming up to us. Why are you at the circle bar if you're in a tri- triangle position? Right, do it as Bill Cosby. Why are you in the... I can't do it. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so, Excuse me. No, no, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, this pe- people were like we were we were just laughing so hard and finishing each other's sentences. And there, there were moments where we weren't talking at all and we were just like... like so I, making eye contact and laughing, and I would say, like, what did you think I just said? Yeah. And you would say exactly what I thought. We were all... We, <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good hive mind going on, yeah. for sure. So this guy came up, and he had, like, a bad, like, kind of a shiny shirt he bought at a Vegas store, mm-hmm. and he kind of looked like he was having a bad night. And like, he was, like, one of the few people that came up to us and said, hey, uh, is it okay if I hang out with you guys? And we're like, we're like, why? It's like, because like you guys are having so much fun. We're like, we're absolutely. Like yeah. you can hang out. So he laughed and laughed and laughed. And then we stood by the, the, the near the bathrooms where the trombones in the, in the air. Yeah, saxophones. It was they're like there's like a, a, a chandelier made of saxophones. And there's, a, and there's a dome, and so like you can hear the sounds from across the other side. Oh yeah, so if someone's walking that way, their voice hits the dome, and it sounds like they're behind you. You maybe have seen like that, like a rotunda kind of. And yeah. we're laughing and laughing. And you were going nuts at this point you know like <laughs> it was it was six hours of just like hysteria the thing i was talking about today because because when it came up when you get when i knew what you guys did yesterday yeah. i was at this uh, you know barbecue and, and drugs came up not that we had any we didn't um but i talked about the mushrooms and uh, the thing i talked about was that i remember really well um people walking to the bathroom and then them walking out and being able to tell so clearly by like their aura their whole vibe that they got went and did cocaine like I swear to God, it was like it was like it was like oh look at oh oh she's pretty cute oh wow there you Jesus what did she do <laughs> like and and nothing nothing visual it was just like this like a ramped up energy that you're like what was going on and I'm like such a bumpkin when it came to and, that and stuff then that, we just had like people that just wanted to be with us and hang yeah out yeah we were we, we were just so happy yeah we were and we were like we were all like three Jimmy Stewart's we were just like hey how you doing like anybody, <laughs> anybody that came down and then you I mean you are are tall as shit. Mike was tall as shit yeah. and bald, like 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 you know, like shaved head. And then then I, so I was just, and I was just in the middle there, you know, point guard. And I was like, we were just having serving a, up funky up, dishes, serving up the high dishes up top. Yeah. <laughs> so I I I had, at this at this time I had been to the Hard Rock probably four or five times in my life before that. Yeah. And so the next time I go there is about a year later, and I I walk into the Circle Bar. I'm, oh, this is the place. And I walk up to the bartender and I said. Because that, that there's these wooden like staircases that go up into the circle bar, and it was stationary. I'm like, when did this stop being a rotating bar? Uh, <laughs> and the guy's like, what? I go, this used to be like a rotating bar. <laughs> and he goes, no. I go, lost. Oh the, shit! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because the lights would always would make you feel like you're like. And, and then, uh, there'd be a guy. There'd be a guy that was standing perfectly still, but in my mind, he was going in a circle. He was orbiting, <laughs> like like a like a planet, and then he would reappear over there. I'm like, this this man. These people just keep spinning around us. 
It was so great. My favorite time, I, you weren't there, but, 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 and I hope he doesn't mind me saying it, but I just think it's one of the funniest things I've ever, ever seen. I know the mushrooms help, but I think you'd be able to, if you've been to Vegas, you could picture this. Dan Backadall, who also did Second City with me uh, at, um, uh, in, in Vegas, we, a bunch of us got together. I think Jeremy might have been there. We were out in front of the Bellagio with those dancing, you know, they call them the dancing fountains and everything. And we're all deciding, you know, mushrooms basically is like, especially at Vegas, is like you go to a pack. You stand in a circle. You laugh at all the fucking crazy shit going on around you, above you, behind you, walking by you. And then you walk for four feet to say, okay, let's go somewhere. You get there, and then you're like, then it happens again. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's how we got there. We, we post. We had two locations, yeah. the bar and yeah. then the saxophone. <laughs> exactly. And we kept so we're, going back and forth to them. We were inside the Bellagio, and it was like fucking the Marx Brothers. But like, you also adopt, if you're on Mushrooms, you also adopt different, it's like, Oh, it's, it's not just let's go back to the circle bar. It's like let's go, let, 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 let's go to the cookie tree. Or was, That's you know, what it was. The I, shark's I, I, nest. It, it, it was shark, something the, the else. The shark tank or it whatever. Becomes, it, everything yeah. becomes its, its own inside joke. It's like, you know, you're going around the Monopoly board like multiple times and renaming stuff. Um, and w- there's, so there's like a group of six of us and five of us over here. And then all of a sudden we just turn around and, and back it all is just watching, the, watching the, the fountains. And we slowly start to figure out that he's pretending like he's their choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> we're all like <laughs> and he's doing it for us but I think he really was doing it like it was so brilliant <laughs> and he did it for like the rest of like whatever fucking Selena not Selena Gomez what's her name Celine Dion song at that point this was this was the, this was the 70s uh, <laughs> But my, heart, it, I, my heart will go on, probably. It probably was, yeah, I some paparazzi song. One, yeah. It was so fun. That's, that town's a mess. <laughs> it needs it. What do you guys uh, think about uh, people who are concerned about people doing drugs who don't? Because I feel like there are some of them who are concerned about people, and that's why they're concerned about people doing drugs. And then I feel like there's the 85% of them that are, are getting high off of other people's drug use. Uh, and are, are are really happy to be concerned about something like the sanctimony of it. Yeah, or, yeah. Like, like like whether whether they're some of those people are recovered, and then mm-hmm. you kind of go, okay, well, so you 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 fought a demon, and you're happy about it, and now you want that to be your thing. Right. Um, but then still, some people, I think there's just a little slice of genuinely evil people who have never done it, will never need to do it, have never done anything, have never cared about anyone, and are kind of like feeling the the unconscious suspicion that maybe they're sociopaths or that they'll never have a connection to anybody, and that that they've found this loophole in society where there's like this thing where it's like, oh, I'm so concerned about that person. And it's like they found found like this little shortcut between like this little wormhole that society offers where you can simultaneously be a good person but be the... Big, the most villainous piece of shit in the world yeah. that doesn't care about anyone has never done anything nice for anybody is just filled with emotional toxicity and passive aggression and just siphons the life force off of everyone around you and that I, I think a I, good sativa would help that <laughs> you know just like a, just like a little just like a little just like a boop just a little boop not a boop a boop they'd be gone yeah. Yeah, and I think they know that, and I think that they feel that that would be annihilation because it would be eliminating the part of them that is more them than the rest of them. And I think that they don't like being surrounded with any reminders that that, that maybe you should just relax and not have that much of an opinion about any anybody else yeah. um, and, and they kind of enjoy the fact that statistically speaking sooner or later people who are okay with drugs um, uh, statistically speaking um, every once in a while one of them dies right. or, or, or has a problem or gets sick and I think they kind of fucking love that I think they really <laughs> love that I think they love that as much as we uh, just western society loves the fact that every once in a while a suicide vest goes off prematurely right. like, like we, we think we, we were like stoked to hear about that and I, th- I think there are people who show up at memorials for writers that overdosed and are you, they're, they're like they're there for the same reason I am on the surface but underneath it they're like this is fucking cool I knew I was right maybe yeah I don't know and some of those people run shows and some of those people spread their cult to everyone underneath them and fuck you um <laughs> Do they uh, know who they are? No, no, no. Hey, let's keep you it can that just way. Tell me, you can just address me directly, <laughs> Dan. Come on, man. No, the entire time you were saying that, I was thinking about the the father from uh, the guy from Footloose. 
who just right. if he just danced if he just right. tried to he dance just, once yeah. and he did and once like, at his wedding or something you know yeah. and, uh, with like, that yeah. I never saw Footloose so, but <laughs> no no I, was, I'm, 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 I did but you, but never you saw get Footloose? it but you get it yeah, yeah. how have never you never seen, seen Footloose I don't know you know the song oh. though right I haven't seen uh, 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 what's the uh, not Goonies. What's the other? I've seen Goonies. Uh-oh. What's the other one? That's Star Trek. The other one. Uh, Grim- King Kong. No, no, I haven't seen Goonies. I saw Gremlins, but I haven't seen Goonies. But yeah. Will, this is really weird to me because I was uh, in your Wikipedia page. It said that You've recently. You've seen Goonies. Late, recently. Yeah. It says in your Wikipedia page. I like to get it Goonies. out there that I've seen Goonies, but it's like a. You got to update that. The, the, the recently, you were in a in a in a in a, a radio play performance. Of, uh, you're doing something on Broadway now. It's like a radio play. That's uh, it's an adaptation of Footloose, isn't it? Uh, and the you you were you it's were a, lo- a loose uh, like it's a it's a it's, loose it's foot loose foot, yeah, foot it's a t- a tighter, foot, It's tied f- foot 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 tighter foot tighter foot, foot tighter, foot tighter cause but a, still loose. And the subtitle is a loose interpretation of the Footloose. Yes. Is that a working title or is that a done deal? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Is done, it all right if we do deal. if we do a scene from from that? Yeah. Uh, like like like. Uh, sure. you, you play the Kevin Bacon role, uh, Thaddeus uh, Foot. Yes. Um, and uh, well, let's. Uh, like, 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 you guys are off book, right? Yeah, but it's only because I've seen it a bunch. Right. Shrab, you know the performance we're I'm talking about. I'm not studied about. in it. I might pass out. Yeah. I don't feel really good right now. What's, what's wrong? No, we're starting the show, right? <gasps> oh. Oh. Shit, this is... Th- Maybe I... you just need to dance. Oh, this, by the way, this is... Um, they do this amazing thing in the show where, like, if you're sitting in the audience, this is happening two seats down from you. This is like a thing that happens. I will never... Mark my words. I will never, ever, ever dance... Period. <laughs> That's the end. Oh, That's yeah. the end. Yeah. Is it that quick? That's the end of the show? We did not get good reviews. No. <laughs> that is true. I can attest to that. Yeah. Wait, so the, the show starts with two people in the audience doing that, and that's the end of the show? Yep. Oh, yeah. Easy it to say have, now. Yeah. It's, it sounds yeah. stupid when you say it. Yeah. I will say the production budget is so inexpensive that it actually... Kind of makes money. Yeah, it's 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 the always sunny in Philadelphia of 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 Broadway shows. It's like it's the most profitable Broadway show in yeah. America. Like, uh, it, uh, we on don't Broadway. Need a sh- yeah, we don't even need a stage. There, it was it's a brilliantly conceived, but I, I don't know. I just have a hard time when people finally get to see something. All the work that went into that, and then for you just to chip away at it. You know, it's like. Like I, you know I, what I mean? It's easy I, to I, do now. I just feel like it had first, second, and third act problems. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree there, but still, <laughs> you know. Do you remember the uh, the Goonies show that you were in? Well, that was a longer time I ago. I do remember. Never feed them uh, after midnight. <laughs> do not get them wet. And a third thing. No. <laughs> but it's probably been discussed, I'm sure, on this exact show but when does they when when can they start feeding him again if it's after midnight? Well, isn't that answered in this scene from the Goonies play that uh, you guys did? What what Dan is trying to express to you guys, he wants to do some improv right now. Oh shit, that was it. Oh it's shit, it's too this- seamless. It, it goes it goes right by me. Uh, you're off duty. You're off duty. That's what it is. I mean, I'm not I'm not explicit oh, sh- about it. <laughs> Jason and Will, what you guys don't know is that, that Harmontown over the years, we're nearing our, is this is our 199th episode. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. So Here we go. Here we go, everybody. 199 <laughs> episodes. Chris in it. Chris, Chris. We got to break it over the, the... Right in this bottle. <laughs> what, this show, as much as the show used to be a kind of a, kind of a haphazard loose rambling thing we, we we i think we can say that we're one of the greatest long form improv shows of all time it's it's uh we do some of the well the most well crafted storytelling character driven long form improv what was the suggestion indulgence 
It was it, it, indulgence and, uh, and, and and Goonies. <laughs> it was. It was Goonies too. It's nice we finally got back to it. Yeah. People love that. Did the person that suggested still here? Uh, 2011. I'd like so. to take this moment to thank Jane for bringing me uh, special absinthe, by the way. Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you, do you guys want to try some of this? This, this shit gets you high. You, you is really, it the real deal? Like it's real deal. Wormwood, like it gets you in the brain. You see the green yeah. fairy. No Jane, did you make this glass too? I didn't. I commissioned it. I you commissioned the glass. Jane works at Corning Institute, right? Corning Glassworks. Corning Glassworks. She's the Tony Stark of glass blowing <laughs> technology, and uh, she we, said we, she has a gift for us. Uh, he's got half of it. Do you want to present? Do you want to present that gift now? It seems like a good time. Oh, look at this. Oh, these beautiful tumblers. Can you, can you, do you want to ex- explain it? Explain it. It's glass. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a sodium calcium silicate. No. Um. <laughs> Can you be more specific? Twenty-eight percent calcium oxide. Okay. I can, I, I, believe me, I can at, do at, it. At, at what temperature do those to, do those two elements bond together and, and, and form glass? Uh, Fahrenheit or centigrade? <laughs> let's go centigrade. Oh gosh, no. Let's do Fahrenheit. <laughs> Come on, I'm the guest. I'm. Okay. I, 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 I'm bi- I'm bi- I can do both. Yeah, okay. thank you. <laughs> Give us both, but put them in whatever order you want. 2150 Fahrenheit. Uh, 2150. That's, yeah, that's when you get everything all melted in. You can gather it and work 2150. it. 2150. About uh, yeah, about 1150 centigrade or Celsius, I should damn. say. Damn, damn, damn. So yeah, so I, I you've got the double rocks. You've got the single rocks glass. These were designed. I, I designed them uh, so based on. Uh, <laughs> perfect. That that was that's what it's for. Well done, <laughs> sir. It works. But so they're supposed to be sort of a mashup of a classic rocks glass with the solo cup, which is sort of one of the symbols of Harmontown. That's awesome. So in, in honor of the 200th episode for Jeff and Dan, T's got the absinthe of malice. Take, take a big swing off that, Will, because we had a guest when we were in New York, Rory. What, what was Rory's last name, Dan? Albanese? Yeah, yeah, Albanese. Uh, and he got, he, he lost his fucking mind. <laughs> he did. <laughs> He, he he went completely bonkers. <laughs> like R- Rory was Rory was drinking it like Welch's grape soda. Yeah, yeah he was, I, I, he was I, I, going at it. I, at some point, I just took the bottle away from him. It was like, like you, no, 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 no. I, I want to taste it. I can't and, taste and, it. Uh, Dan's got the, also got the Earth Shine, the 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 original that I brought in episode seventy eight hundred and how many episodes ago? Um, latest version. It's actually it's not one hundred and thirty five proof now. I've dropped it down to about one ten, so you can actually drink it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, cheers. Also, what, what this I love is just Jane, the olive oil. This is <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's that's the absinthe of malice. So this, you take this, you infuse it with wormwood and about fifteen or twenty other things, distill it again, add some more color to it, and so that's homemade absinthe. That's just homemade. If you're listening at home right stuff. now, start a podcast. People just start making you booze. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's what I'm here. It's for. called the secret. <laughs> I found right? my place. Right. But these, these glasses are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so that's much, Jane. Hey, Jane. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jane says, I'm done with Sergio. Treats me like a rag doll. 90s. I was, I was into uh, Jane's Addiction and uh, Phil Collins at the exact same time. I was a master of both worlds. That's, that's your duality. That's, uh, your, that's like your Batman Bruce Wayne. Uh... All right. Well, uh, so um, yeah, I uh, I was trying to pimp us to do a uh, like a little um, improv thing because you're both so talented, but uh, didn't work out that way. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked. Up. I didn't know it's that. It's not you guys. I didn't it's, know you wanted really, more than that. It's really it's mostly Schraub who knows better. <laughs> I mean, the only reason I the only reason I started doing it is because Schraub started doing it. Like I never wanted to do that in this show. And then Schraub would come on and he's delightful and he would like go into these dumb sketches. You think I'm delightful, Dan? <laughs> Here this whole time I thought you didn't think about me like that. I thought, I thought, I thought you thought I was a, a fucking piece of shit. Anyways, here's, here's Will Forte's Goonies uh, play. That's, <laughs> is, we're going to do a scene from it that's... Uh, <laughs> Premiering um, next week on Broadway at nine. Douglas, yeah. Douglas, it's, it's seven fifty-eight a.m. and the Goonies very hungry. <laughs> what? 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 Give them something to eat. There's a half a sandwich in the fridge. I gotta Dad, go to work. How do we know what 
time is uh, the appropriate uh, uh, safe time? So I guess we got to pop in the movie. There's no need to pop in the movie. I told you after midnight. I'm the one that gave you that movie. Claudius Johnson, Tyrell Blackman. Thanks, Claudius. But Claudius, hear, hear me out here. Even if it's 11.58 p.m., it's 23 hours and 58 mm. minutes after midnight. <laughs> he makes a good point, Claudius. I gotta go to work. Y'all think it with that Asperger brain. <laughs> Claudius. You, you got to feel the Goonie rules. Feel him in your heart, and your mind will follow. Magical black man trope away! Douglas, something's happening to me inside. I'm feeling something. He the left part rent. of my body, upper part, in the, up by my chest. What's wrong? It's beneath my rib cage. Blood's pumping through it. Your heart? That must be it. <laughs> oh. Buddy, that's okay. Everyone's got a heart. Nothing you gotta be worried about. I gotta go to work. <laughs> oh, I hope it's not work. Hello? What the fuck? When are you getting to work here? Uh, These newspapers are piled up to the ceiling. Will you get over here? I can't even get out of my office. <laughs> I can't get out of my office with all these newspapers piled up to the ceiling. Extra, extra. Oh, where should I put this one? Shut up, Tommy. I'm on the phone. I'll just put it on top of this big pile. Oh, now they're past the ceiling. Hey! What? I really gotta go. Maybe if... Look, look, we really got to figure this out. I'd love to. Hang on. Scar 69. Uh. <laughs> Hello? Hi, yeah, uh, 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 Douglas is, uh, uh, he's, he's, uh... Be uh, careful, it's my own Who is this? I'm uh, a busy man! Oh, shit. See? A <laughs> lot easier, right? A lot easier than you'd think, and then you get in there and your whole mind goes nuts. He's intimidating, but he pays so well. I know. By the way, friggin' Star 69 still works. Which... <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. why, why do you think this is my only source of income? Because my prank phone call albums don't sell anymore. Because uh. I can't make them. Look, maybe... Maybe we can kiss this away. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I touch you once. I touch you twice. Only I can't show up with work with all that lipstick on my face. Uh, they help, people will think I'm a tramp. Like well, no, I don't show up to work. Only show up to the wedding altar. Are you trying to tell me that you're going to spend your father's fortune on our life? I can't think of another thing that would be mor- worthy of that $750. <laughs> well, then I think on the way to the chapel... We go kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> That's why I love you. <laughs> Meanwhile, and I will always love you. I will always love you. And the fountains are going like this. And the fountains are like that, and Dan Bacchanal is doing the choreography, <laughs> and the mushrooms are going. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> is everybody on their phone? What's going on? No, it's, we were watching. We were enraptured. That we're... felt like a good edit point. I don't know. Oh, 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 oh! Meanwhile, in Buddy's heart, uh, I represent anger. <laughs> I represent satisfaction. <laughs> and I'm John Lovitz. <laughs> Buddy's not satisfied anymore. That's the ticket. Let's make him feel like dancing. Outside Buddy. Yeah, yeah, you were. I'm I'm Douglas, your buddy. Oh. You know, sometimes when I don't take my medication, I forget my name and such. 
Yeah, that's why you got to take it every morning and night. Buddy, buddy, it's your father. Uh -huh. I overheard you talking about killing me and taking my fortune. <laughs> Sir, that was mostly me. I got to be honest. You're oh, Douglas. I never thought you two were a good match. I just wanted to let you know one thing. There's a dance competition tonight. <laughs> Buddy Douglas, Buddy's father, this is your father. <laughs> oh, shit. I overheard you talking to Buddy and Douglas about the dance contest. Yes, Daddy. I, th I, thought, you I thought you died decades ago. <laughs> Death is a figment. Time is man's enemy. Oh, I gotta go to work. <laughs> you will go to work if you and I switch places. Yeah. Because I'm jealous of your youth. And you need to learn about acumen. Uh, okay, but I, I mean, so just like switch outfits? Like you want to go to work for me? That sounds awesome. It I won't will tell work you this. that way. Dad? Uh, wait, yeah, hold on. Dad, I overheard you talking about switching places with my son. Um, you know, we have a goonie in the basement. <laughs> if you uh, think... Uh, 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 oh, fuck it, I'm uh, just going to feed him. Uh, <laughs> oh, no! 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 Don't you fools know that if you feed uh, a goonie uh, any time after midnight, even if it's in the p.m. of the next uh, day, <laughs> that their nipples start to shoot laser beams? But it's not the p.m. of the next day. It's 8.02 a.m. Oh, <laughs> shit. Ow. 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 Oh my! Oh! Uh, 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 Honey, what did you do? Why I did don't you know. feed me? I oh. fed him. Oh. Oh. Sweeties, I'm a, I'm a fat piece of shit now. Oh, I'm so oh fat. no! Now he's all so body conscious. Later at the dance contest. All right, everybody, it's the big dance contest. You know the rules. Best dancer wins. Everybody else dies. <laughs> Oh, you the rock and roll control. Ah, what do I do? Ah, I broke both my legs earlier. Dancing doesn't require legs. It requires a spirit. Ow. You're doing it, buddy. You're doing it. Ow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Brenda, look at Buddy dancing with that goonie. They're amazing. Shook -a -shook -a rock I'm a fat rock piece of rock shit. Rock and rock and Ow. Rock Rock and Ow. shake. Rock I don't know how long I have to dance for. Rock and shake. The rock rules were unspecified. Rock don't worry shake, about the rules. Ow. Rock and roll. Just shake, rock. dance. Whatever happens, rock happens. Rock and shake, Douglas, how did you get out of the rock dancing shake, competition? Rock and shake, Work. Rock, 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 I declare. Fuck, I gotta get a I declare, job. I declare a winner. Rock, rock. Two winners, to be exact. Oh. But as you know, the rules can only be one winner. Everyone else dies. It's a dance-off between the Goonie and Buddy. Who goes first? Buddy. Fuck. <laughs> it's okay, Buddy. Just set the table. Just set the table and there's nothing you can do... Once you set the table. Douglas, that's a great idea. <laughs> ching, ching, clink, clank, clink, clank, 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 
literal table setting. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. Forks go on the left side. You can remember that because it's four letters in fork and on left. Clank, 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 Spoons clank. go on the right. Knives go on the right. He's doing it perfect, and he's never eaten at a restaurant. What is he doing? He's setting the table. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it good. Oh, no, Claudius Blackman. I'm out of here. <laughs> What? I've been I've been noted as a trope. I set the table, Douglas. I'm sorry. I set the fucking I'm table. Sorry. <laughs> All I right. felt like I participated in some way. You were there the whole time in my fucking heart. <laughs> All right, cats and kitties, you just saw Buddy set the table. Now it's time for the final course. We got the Goonie. Eat shit and die. <laughs> I, you, I told you not to feed me. Wah, 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 oh, wah. Holy shit, he's eating from the table that got set by Buddy. I've never uh, seen anything like it. Look and at I put buddy. shit on the plates. He's literally eating shit. I wonder if he'll die. Sunlight CG. Uh, oh. A crucifix logo. Oh. Oh. The Lamb of God. Ugh. Ecclesiastes 117. And I saw a man on a horse, and his sword was justice. For he who shall not let him in the door shall need for nothing. I am Tetsuo. I think we have a winner, everybody. The winner is the Goonie. Oh, man. I can't believe the Goonie. That's right. That's right. The winner. You all thought I couldn't do it, and I did it. Where's the trophy? You're all fucking dead. Give it to me. Give me the trophy. Here's your trophy, Goonie. There's one thing you might want to think about. Bruce Willis, what are you doing here? Making trophies out of silver. Goonies hate silver. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, buddy! Make him deep throat the trophy! Yeah! Yeah! Finish! 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 <laughs> I totally participated. <laughs> it's in the way that you use it. Da, da. It comes and it goes. It's in the way that you use it. Wow. That's a good, yeah. that's a good wow. movie. And that was on Broadway. And that was one scene. And we were just reading it. That's great. I'm going to go see that. The thrill. The thrill of live theater. Oh. You know? What a rush. Man, oh man. They say it's dead. No one's more bummed out than Piven. No freaking Tony's. To have Tonys. that taken away Zero from Tony, Zero Tony nominations. Yeah. No, not a single person that votes for the Tonys came to see it. It slap in the face. It's a rigged system, the Tonys. We did use a Tony, Tony, Tony song mm -hmm. in it. So yep. that was kind of, we did get three it Tonys. It feels good. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> well that was it. If the, what happened the, to Tony, Tony, Tony? Are they still, are they still doing the show? No, seriously. I don't know. The FedEx. <laughs> well, you know how um, how what? early uh, silent movie stars were, were like like the the talkies came and they were if they had speech impediments they were they didn't make the translation. Tony 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 clearly not a uh, search bar iTunes compatible band. Yeah. What what spelling of Tony are you going to type in first? Yeah. You don't know. You're going to nope. type in T O N and hope it comes up in the fucking list. What well, they should do is no, change it you get into Tom three Luke. different versions of Tony. If you. If, if each Tony like the was ego, a different super person. ego, and it. They're, that's why they're right. There. Yeah, uh, isn't one of them Raphael Sadiq? The the guy. I think one of those guys might be. Uh, the, the, has gone on to have a very nice for real solo career. I think. What happened to uh, also? You got you, you got your Bell Biv DeVos. What happened to the Bells mm -hmm. and the Bivs? Spending money, man. They made a lot was, of money. They're just spending. Have was, fun. Was, was top forty music? I guess when that was top forty music. It was like playing during the dances where I go to uh, school. I'm like, I said, it was all. 
it was all about sex. Like I'm not saying. I mean, obviously, as the future continues, like the the music, it gets more and more like uh, you know Obvious. sexual. Yeah, no. But it seemed like back then it was like I'm remembering like when I was 16 to 18. It seemed like every song on the radio was just about like it was it was only just it was just like like all the like that song was like. If the rhythm feels good, to the baby, let me hear you. Ah, ah, baby. It was yeah. like an orgasm used as an yeah. instrument. And then uh, and then that poison song was like... Do like, me, it, baby. Yeah, it was like everything yeah. was do me and That's what happens when I'm, bodies I'm, start I'm, slapping. I'm going to... From I'm doing gonna, the wild thing. I'm going to yeah. sex you up. Uh, Ooh, girl, I'll make you feel my dear. Erect and gorged with all my blood. Insert it into the corresponding hole. That's how babies get made. Yeah, exactly. Um, There's a lot of safe sex songs too. You all, it's weird because at that time, sex was was a very dangerous thing. Yep, it was as yet, dangerous as it was ever going to get. And, and it was. Like, have, we don't have to take a close off. <laughs> yeah, have a good time. <laughs> that, wait, what was that? Was that <laughs> close off. That was me. That was me acting like I know how to harmonize. <laughs> no, but I mean, what was that? I never heard that a we real song. We don't have to take our clothes Close off and have a good <laughs> time. Oh no! I don't remember that one. <laughs> we could just play a board game <laughs> and meet your parents and <laughs> be a tribe. It's like it's all about over the pants hand jobs. Jason, <laughs> Jason, Try humping you know. is the best kind because you never have to find out what's inside. <laughs> Jason, how many minutes front to back do you think you spent on camera on SNL doing the running man? <laughs> My, I bet if you add it up together, it's going to be a lot. It's going to seem like a lot more just in perception, but I bet it's probably twelve minutes, and it was exhausting. <laughs> I have a real bone to pick with this whole new Running Man challenge. I don't like. I don't like new generations taking things like. Like I know I gave hashtag away. That was pound when I was a kid. We gave it away, but the Running Man challenge, which I love, I love the song, I love the spirit behind it, but it's not the Running Man. And I just want to put that on record. I just want to put that on record. What is what is the Running Man challenge? The Running Man challenge is that is is that it's to that um, great song um, I forget who sings it, uh, uh, but it's like a, a, a kid started in a high school and it's them dancing and then now college basketball teams did it and it hasn't hit like water bucket challenge level and there's no charity attached to it whatsoever uh, <laughs> that I know of. People I don't are think. just like let's get these diseases out of the way. But it's just the, I challenge you to eat a candy bar. It's just the, yeah exactly yeah for who for me for me <laughs> for friendship for your tummy <laughs> you're starving for, for hunger. <laughs> You, you, you know, it's a bummer. A friend of mine who's a, uh, hang, hangs out at our local bar, The Drawing Room, he's an editor, and he said, hey, Jeff, um, if you're free over the next couple of days, I, like, I want you to be in this, uh, like, I, I need a couple extra clips for this music video that I'm editing, mm-hmm. and it, like, it's, it's, it's like a silly song, but it's, I think it's going to be pretty big. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It sounds dumb. And, like, and so he sent me this clip, and like... <laughs> Uh, he, a said, he, said, he, he sends me a clip of like what I have to do, like there's a dance I have to do. I'm like, I don't know. And so I said, like, there's some friends of mine, they should be in it. And they were in it. And he's like, I think you should be in it. It would be really funny to have you in it. And what it was was the Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Nene video. <laughs> and I could have been in that stupid piece of shit. <laughs> How funny would that be just for me in a suit just doing the whip or the uh, nae or I don't whatever. know what it is. I'm, I'm behind. I'm, I, I, I don't know what it is. You it's, know what it is. Well, it's like, it's insert, it's, you remember what the Macarena was? Like, mm-hmm. you're a structure guy. Like, it's like, just extrapolate. Well, yeah, but that's how you become a curmudgeon is by saying, uh, sounds like another Macarena. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Only if this is just the shadow no, again. No, no, no. But I mean, the Star Wars. But then you're not remembering how, how much joy the Macarena gave you, especially right. you. Yeah, no, me specifically. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I like, called you about it. Yeah, because, because there was three no in the morning. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I don't so, know what to do. And it wasn't even weird to get a phone call. No. That's how long ago it was. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, man, I know it's pretty intense. And and it, I think it made you, you said it made you feel like you went to spring break, even though you never got to go to spring break or something. Whatever it was, that joy that you had at that point. <laughs> People are whipping a nene and getting that joy. All right. No, I, I, I did. I, I went to visit my parents in Florida once. Uh, when Only my, once. When, when, well, <laughs> one time too many. Ah, that's some crazy family. They should be on TV. The Harmons. <laughs> we wouldn't call it Harmon Town. Uh, no. Why no, would you? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cutting up this pie into any more slices. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> this shit's solid gold, you, baby. You, you think I watched Sony crackle getting a piece of this action? <laughs> um, the the uh, Wait, God, damn, it was, oh the Maca, I went to visit my parents in Florida when the Macarena was popular, and there was this. It's Florida, so and they lived in this like kind of community for old people. My parents were like they, they would go to like early bird dinners and stuff, and there was this there was this sort of big wooden deck and there was a woman with a boom box and there was a bunch of old people they were all learning the Macarena and I I was like this is my chance to learn the Macarena without any concern about anything if anything I'm like uh, no matter how awkward I am I'm still like Jamie Lee Curtis in perfect you know like I'm still our John Travolta like I'm there's a good I'm, chance I'm, you're going to pick it up before then they're going to yeah, be like what is I, yeah, this yeah I, I just like, like if, 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 no, no one's going to beat me up and, and if anyone makes fun of me I'll push him over and run uh <laughs> And, I, and so I, 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 you know, my then girlfriend and I, like, 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 we learned the Macarena, and it was fun. I understand the cultural. Do you still know I it? I don't need to sign off on the cultural efficacy of uh, of popular songs. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Is but what's this whip whip my nay nay? I don't know how to do it. It's this. Is, I, it ends like this. Whip whip my nay nay. Whip whip my nay nay. But my, my my friend Rich, who edited the video, he sent me this clip of the guy. What's his name? I don't even know the. I don't remember. Salento. Salento. Uh, Salento. And uh, he said he's this served clip, with your food, and, and, but and it's, it's, it tastes like soap. <laughs> I, I think I, st- I think I still have this clip. It's Salento talking straight to camera, saying, "All right, there's a bunch of dances in this one. This one's called the whip, and this one's called the nay nay." And, and so he shows them all. And one's called "Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me." Okay, the next one's called uh, "Don't watch me, don't watch me." Like it was like it was. It went on forever, and I was like, "This guy looks like a lunatic." I think you have that clip. Would you press play on that clip right now, Jeff, and press play on that clip? I think we have it right now. I think we have it. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I do. Play. Uh, Forte, do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's setting the table. He's setting the table. Oh, oh God! <laughs> set that. Set that. Set that table. Set that table. And set oh, that. Set that. Yeah. Set that. Set All that right. table. Well, I just, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going upstairs. Oh, oh, he forgot he's something. Climbing. He's climbing a ladder. He's going. Where's he going? Oh, oh, he's looking around. Oh shit! Oh no! There oh, he, is. he sees oh, a no. bear. He sees a bear. Uh, oh god! Uh, oh god! He's uh, <laughs> no. He doesn't know what to do. He's, get out he's, of calling, he's calling the phone. Get out of there! Hello. Hello, he's, there's a bear over there. He's got to do something. He's getting out the belt. He's calling on a diff- different phone. phone. You've got to talk to me on a different phone. Now he's talking on the other phone. Landline. This is the landline. How come they, uh, I'm a landline. There's no, uh, you, you hold on. Hold on. There's a bear. Just, just take it easy. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You need to understand. I'm not... Oh, shit. Oh, I got no. the phone. I can't oh, believe no. I got the phone. I need to call that guy back. There's a bear. He's going everywhere. There's a bear. I, 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 how, who, who will I be able to call that will make anything happen about this bear? I'm standing in a tower. I crawled up to the top of it. I can see the bear. I've got two phones. I shouldn't need to do more than this. I've seen the bear. I, I, uh, there's got to be something I can do. i got to get through to these people. Wait. Um, I, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. I'm hanging up. I, I, I'm just sitting down. I'm crying. Uh, uh, oh. The bear. The bear's gone. He's gone. What? Oh, he's he's got more bears with him. I gotta call both phones now. All right, I'm telling you, there's there's multiple bears. There's a bear problem out here. I can't. <laughs> Dear God in heaven, why? Oh, I destroyed my phone. I'm becoming bear. Oh, oh, wait, oh, no, oh, okay, well, there's, nope, that phone's broken, I can't use that one anymore, all right, okay, I'm lighting that bear, the phone on fire, I'm, I'm putting a basket over it, and I, I, I'm making smoke signals, smoke signals. Uh, inside the hut, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and signaling the bears, hey, bears, bears, uh, the, the, if there's smoke in the air, that means that you should go up in the sky, <laughs> because there's probably salmon up there, and everyone loves smoked salmon, I did it, yay! <laughs> Ah, there they go. They're all leaving. I did it right. Time to pick up these hot coals and just play with them in my palm. Ow! God damn it, that hurt. (laughs) Uh, And I I feel like... I I just meant like I thought you were going to do the voice of the guy that was going to do the nay-nay and do the shit. (laughs) 
was like, <laughs> I, I was. I, I was doing the. <laughs> right. No, you were doing the actual nay nay and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because the, now, like, the, the, the Macarena was back in the 90s. The d- dances now are a lot more complicated. Oh, they, they tell the whole heightened. story now. Yeah. Did you get, did you guys do that bear hunt when you were kids in uh, uh, like pre kindergarten at daycare center no. like 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 we're going on a bear hunt and yes there was I, a thing you would crawl a tree and then you would look I think yeah. you call it crawling a tree I totally forgot about that yeah <laughs> you'd, you'd turn the lights off and everybody would yeah. unbuckle their pants <laughs> and, and then and then, right. and then you would pr- found right. one found one <laughs> I found yeah. a bear I found, found a, a bear I found a bear 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 Found a bear, found a bear. I remember when I, when I was in preschool, uh, I, you know, I was like maybe just four years old, and no, no one teaches you how to play doctor, but we, we actually, like, when was, the teacher left the class, we, we, we got Gloria something or other, I forget her last name. She, she volunteered to take her clothes off, lay under the teacher's desk, and all of the men in the classroom. <laughs> well, if you just remember surgeons. her lawyer's name, we can call it. <laughs> <laughs> For real? I forgot her last name. Gloria, I forgot her last name. Uh, we assaulted Gloria. her. Gloria. <laughs> Gloria. So she had all of her clothes she off. She took her it. clothes off, and me and Jeffrey Kim, who was a Korean kid, we, he and I were like the two surgeons. Why do you have to say his race? <laughs> well, it comes into, it comes into play. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking better. <laughs> You're going to want to know he was Korean. <laughs> yeah. What goes down? <laughs> <laughs> but like it was like it was just like the kids exploring each other's body. It was totally all right. Yeah. <laughs> Every, and, and this was preschool. Preschool. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's good because that yeah that really explained yeah. why we needed to know he was Korean. <laughs> <laughs> it really came into play. He definitely came into play. So uh, anyway, I mean, so I'm fucking Jeffrey Kim, and I mean, <laughs> I mean fucking him, <laughs> Korean style. <laughs> Oh, there okay. we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. I got you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the teacher comes back. I found the Elmers. What the what fuck the is going fuck? on here? Stop fucking Jeffrey Kim. Get that out of Jeffrey Kim right now. And put it in, in these. So <laughs> Jeffrey Kim starts fucking the teacher. It was fucking, it was, it was way out of hand, man. That was the 70s, man. It was the 70s. I had a, my, my principal's name was Mr. Fromgen. And uh, and I, I I'm, I'm okay you? I'm okay using that name because I would love to go to court and talk about what an asshole he was. <laughs> but he, he would he loved drills he loved uh, like like he, yeah like well, or no no not not power drills like he had a he had a hand crank siren but it was supposed to be mounted it had screw holes on it you could see it was supposed to be mounted on a counter but he would he would walk around going and why would he make the noise if he had the drill. I said that makes sense. Ignore it. Redundant. It's Ignore redundant. redundant. <laughs> That's like having a cow and going. The sound Ooh. that comes out of the thing is so great too. It's a waste. But there were tornado drills, fire drills, tornado drills, and and there were Tornadoes bomb drills. Milwaukee. And bomb drills were funny back then because yeah. bomb drills meant uh, you should grow a mohawk because World War Three is happening. Mm-hmm. Like the Russians have launched forty-seven thousand missiles. At brown Deer, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Gotta take out that brown deer, Wisconsin. Now it's come full circle where bomb drill means holy shit, a kid brought a fucking bomb to school. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, a different it's, thing. Not, it's not funny anymore. That, but... The hashtag, the running man, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, well. But he would also he would take us into the unfinished area or basement of the school and explain to us Turn out like, the lights. whether or not we had survived the tornado or fire or bomb yeah. in question. But the, I remember the beginnings of the drills would be like line up boy girl boy girl like like that seems silly like the g- gender these will be your mates uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. your like, job is to repopulate <laughs> the planet sperm providers and yes. patty cake makers. Will be the foundation of our new society. <laughs> Tornadoes are repelled by glass ceilings. <laughs> Bombs bounce off of them. <laughs> A gender dichotomy will be our new weapon against the mutants. We had to, we were, we were like two blocks away from the, our neighborhood's tornado uh, siren and in Kansas and. It, it was, it, it was frightening. The screen, the the sky had turned like green, like legit green, and it would be the stillness. And then the siren would start. And we'd go look at the window. And me and my younger sisters, and we'd be like, "Oh God!" 
and then we'd have to go down, run down the basement. You lived in Tornado World. Yeah, yeah. It was like like the fucking movie that showed on once a year that like where tor- tornadoes were famous in Kansas. When horrible. tornadoes were famous. Yeah. <laughs> before Your Twister, new Annie show. Before Twister got it. <laughs> Twister snatched it from us when for a little while. When tornadoes were famous, you're yeah. like Archie Bunker. Ah, jeez, Edith, now these colored people, they got all the headlines. Remember when tornadoes were famous? <laughs> all you had to do was know a few steps to rip up a trailer. Yeah. That was talent. <laughs> now this Sammy Davis, this Nat King Cole. Um, did you, uh, Jason, my, did you ever see like an actual tornado, like a twister? No, kind of, kind never. No, 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 no. Were you were you sad when uh, when that mean old lady took your little dog from you? And, uh... <laughs> no, because I my sisters wanted the dog. I was I was a little bit more. Also, I believe you got to you know ride the horse in the direction it's facing. I have a very faint childhood memory because I had my great grandpa was from uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, right near you. Sure. Yes. I mean. In Tornado World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was like, I, I have a very, very, like, like remote childhood memory of, like, you know how when you're a kid you pretend to be asleep to get the free ride to the car? Like, like, like you just, like, you, you just, like, yeah. figured that out. Yeah. Like, I wonder if parents know that, that, like, 85% of the time a sleeping child is just faking it. Like, 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 do we, do we ever to be call them on it? But I guess that's like sleep shaming, and you don't want to do that either. Because part of it, you would listen, and you would be like, uh, the, uh, I remember... I would do that at like grandma's house and they'd go, is he really sleeping? Is he faking? And I'd be like, fuck you, bitch. You, you'd think that or say that? I would think, I wouldn't say it. I'm not, uh, I'm, I, not, I, I'm, not I'm not a that's, that's no Roger word. Rabbit character. Yeah, yeah, I, I, feel I didn't you. have that word power yet. Yeah. I, w- I was like, I would have been goo goo gaga, yeah. but, but I, was, I was like, I was like, I was like, there, don't you dare, like, like Aunt Susie, don't mm-hmm. you dare like, 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 do, like sleep shame me. I, was, I could be asleep. That's what's important. All you're doing half the time I'm awake, you're hoping I fall asleep. Yeah, all you do is, uh, yeah, you, you're always do, like, complaining about my energy level. I like, lay down in a sleeping bag and you tell me that I look cute. What do you think I'm going to keep doing? Anything that provides comfort is a potential addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Let's roll with it. Get, get me in the car, get me home, and shut the fuck up. You're fucking lame. It's like, I, I'm the sack of potatoes you always hoped I'd be. <laughs> Yeah. So, so much anger. The, the, the angry little child. They p- poured it into me like a sponge. Their anger, not mine. Yours. So you just- All of yours. <laughs> ah! So I, I, I have this faint memory of like being carried. I, I was pretensy sleeping, and my dad carried me through what seemed like a tornado. There was a tor- We went to the tornado cellar. Yeah. Every place in the lower Midwest... Uh, uh, has a tornado cellar. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a special thing like bomb shelters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like everybody has a tornado cellar. And uh, did, did you guys? We just had a basement. We just the, the, our house, the basement was underground, like legit. Right. So uh, no, I, sound I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to brag, but yeah, we, it was, uh, fully we, underground. We hid under. <laughs> yeah, like we eight. used to hide under the pool table. Yeah. You got to make a. That's a good way. What do you way guys think about that triangle? that earthquake thing? They go like hide under a thing. It's like isn't that just to create a pocket of air so you die slowly? You're supposed to do it. Uh, find a triangle, right? Yeah. Like a, You're supposed to find something that won't immediately break by the initial impact of everything above you, but that just means that you'll take days to die. Yeah, I mean. Uh, because either something's falling, either you're where things are falling that much on top of you, right. in which case you're either dead right away or dead in three days. In my, this is my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. But when they say, like, find a doorway, they're like, you know, there's been that cynical joke of that, that's where they look to find you. Right. But I think that there's, part of, there's a truth to that where they're saying, like, well, there's air pockets, structural air pockets. And that, that's where people have been for, like, three days. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm somewhat claustrophobic. Yeah, but that might be that might be a first world problem. That the second you're sort of underneath a bunch of rubble, you'll be like, "Oh, this this is a lot worse than not." So like not you're saying not that existing. In the third world, they're like, actually, oh, at least my world. boss isn't whipping me. Yeah, third world, it's like the world's the the earth shaking. This could all turn out better than it was. But they're like snow day. <laughs> I would only assume. <laughs> when we were kids, when it would snow and we couldn't yeah. go to school, we'd run out and dig holes in the snow and yeah. stay in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... so funny. <laughs> the rest of the world is so poor. Uh, when I was a, when depravity I was, is when, the... when I was a kid here, I, I don't know if it happens anymore, but when I was a kid, there were smog days where the air quality was so bad we weren't allowed to go outside and have recess because you would get like a burning, like painful chest. Like, it was really, really bad. You couldn't go to, like, basketball practice or anything. You had to stay inside and not 
ever go outside because the smog was so bad. Yeah. Then, then they took the lead out of the gasoline, and that, I think that stopped. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a lie. That's a huge lie. That's very, very a huge lie. I can't uh, You know uh, Sammy Snopes? <laughs> Sammy Snopes. I'm Sammy Snopes. That's a huge lie. I love Hitler, and my, I'm orange. I'm Sammy Snopes. Um, are, you, are, you, are you doing Trump or I was trying Allen? to do Trump, I I was trying to do Trump but uh, I, I don't have a Trump. Uh, you gotta start with your fire. That makes it, that's like your yeah. you're fired. Yeah, yeah you go, you're, you're fired. You fired. And then it comes. <laughs> you gotta say you're it like you're fired. You fired. You fired. You fired. You fired. I'm Vinny Barbarino. I'm Sammy Snopes because I started with you fired. I'm, you fired. See, you, it's, yeah, you uh, automatically right everyone is agreeing that this is a fantastic Trump <laughs> impersonation. Fired. You fired. I just you fired. I just shot. I just shot with Dana Carvey, and he has a, he has an amazing Trump. Of course, like, like yeah. it's, 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 like he's he has these his impressions are always like that amazing. Like he, what he, does it sound like? I well, I can't. I if, if but start with your fire. As with start his with impressions, if you hear them, then everyone will be doing Trump perfectly because it's will like and Jason. Thing will right and Jason, do you know that Dan does a really good iced tea impression? <laughs> no, does he? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's it's pretty good. Do you, do you want to beat, or you just want to? You want to just do it yourself? No, just give me a just give me a topic. I'll uh, I'll t- I'll talk about uh, rain shoes. Rain shoes. <laughs> rain shoes. <laughs> like rain boots. Rain shoes. <laughs> yeah. Rain I shoes. I listen, man. <laughs> Everything you've been wearing on your feet, shit. <laughs> that ain't shit. New rain shoes? It ain't personal. It's business. I got. I, I kind of lost my momentum. No, that, that was it. I tell you, not, it's not. It's not polite uh, to to make people. The back loved it. They're like, oh shit, another guest. <laughs> yeah, they don't know that. Yeah. Time. Uh, like, it's amazing. <laughs> ice tea's here. No, I, now, shut now, the fuck up. Ice tea's here. <laughs> Listen! Dan, Dan and Rob, what a lot of people don't know is that Jason Sudeikis does one of the greatest Rosie Perez impressions as you, you've, ever, you've ever heard. Billy! Oh, Billy! What is a quince? She lives right near us in Brooklyn. And what? We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rosie Perez lives right near us. I just watched uh, White Man Can't Jump recently. Delightful movie. An movie? independent movie. This <laughs> is really, like, it compares. No, not at all. It's a big old studio movie, I, but I when you it. watch it, you're just like, oh my the, God, this the is The outfit like- that Wesley Snipes wears while playing basketball mm-hmm. is one of the most hilarious things. No one's ever played sports wearing a painter's hat. He's, a, he's like a gay Italian bicyclist. <laughs> well, no, that's what Wesley Snipes dressed like that. Uh. Wesley Snipes' outfit is just as ridiculous because yeah, yeah. it's like he's got the bicycle hat, yeah. like, flipped up and like like a very yeah, really deep good. cut tank top. Were you saying Wesley or Wesley. Woody? Yeah, he's oh, Wesley. I'm sorry. Woody Harrelson's outfit's pretty nuts too. It's, it's, it's awesome. The 80s is really good. 90s, 80s. 90s, I think. Or maybe, 89, maybe, maybe 91. Early, 90, 91? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we saw her at a restaurant at, right when we first moved to the hood and she goes, oh, you guys live here? Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I here think, comes the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Olivia Wilde lives there. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, I kind of took it. As, I wear it with a badge of honor. I like that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I That's guess so. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't like. She was. I, maybe she was. Ju- not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> huh, huh? Golly, uh, this dummy. This dummy thought it was a joke. Maybe it wasn't. As I'm saying it now, like, is it okay to talk about what your what, what your wife is doing uh, while she's here? Uh, yeah, I think so. She's just fucking a bunch of dudes, right? Yeah. It's a, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fine. You're fine with that, right? It's, is this, oh, is this I, called cuckold fetish? What's it called? Well, it's not a fetish. I mean, I have no. Uh, you don't like it. it. It doesn't turn me on. No, right. I, but, but I don't. But I don't hate it. Right. You know what I mean? It's like I mean, she, it's like, it's like she's the breadwinner, and it's gonna be how it's gonna be. Yeah, but she's not. It's like it's like she acquires nothing except for potentially diseases right. and. <laughs> And you just Who knows what you, memories that I'll. Have you no try part to be of. encouraging. You just say, "Yeah, I'm like, Great. all right, have fun." Like, I, what do you say? You're just kind of like, I get it, and at the same time, you're like, I wish this wasn't the way. But then I'm also like, you know what? You know, we only get one shot on this marble. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for better or for worse. For better or for worse. <laughs> the, you gotta ride that the horse. Cuck, the cuckold's mantra. Yeah, <laughs> hey, we only get one shot on this marble. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, no, that's not wordplay. You guys are no, no. Uh, oh, that's a terrible. <laughs> no, no, that, that, I, I just, I just oh, touched I thought, my, I, thought, I touched like, it by accident. First, uh, there was a mis- Yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, and I, and I was, of course, I was like, yeah, well, okay, as long as it. Because yeah. th- that's why I have this podium. Is I've been touching it by accident during the entire show. <laughs> Is she do- she's doing a music video or something? She's yeah, she's directing a music video for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She had a, she has she's had phone calls with Flea and she's just like, "Oh my god, if like the 15-year-old me like, you know, it's one of those nuts moments for her. It's her second one. She directed an Edward Sharp video, and then this is her second one. Yeah, that doesn't... No, she, she doesn't need anything plugged, but I, I, I think it's worth promoting Olivia Wilde's uh, director and producer. 100%. Uh, no, it's, it's, the, it's, one of the, I mean, it's one of the most amazing things about, uh, you know, being with her is, like, is being able to brag about her. But this one is such a cool one. I told... I tell everybody... It, it's more fun to br- brag about your partner than it is yourself, at least for me. It's like... It's, it, but he, he gets in some brags of his... <laughs> Own. Yeah. He showed us the Nike closet. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he, I he, he, it didn't, right he didn't walk past it. He no, was like, no. By I, the way, here's every shoe Jason, made by Nike. But I did know as I was going to do it. I was like, I was like, well, th- th- these guys aren't a safe space. But here we go. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll hear about this. <laughs> this will be podcast. It's like this is me. Oh, oh well. For the record, it's the size of like an elevator. Your, your, your house is your house is crazy. He has an arcade down in the basement. Like you got your own little. It's the size of an elevator, and it's on the fourth story of the first four oh, story house. I've ever been in in my life. Second floor. <laughs> All right, but there were two above us when I. Yeah. I've never been on that many. Uh, That's cool. I've never been on that many floors of a building when I wasn't uh, being yelled at by somebody, like, like or, or being turned down for Same. a job. Like, Same. I, I was in a person's home and I was like on a fourth floor hey, at I, one I, point. It's not lost to me. I didn't pay for the whole thing. I, it, it's, it's a it's a fifty fifty endeavor. We're hoping our, our little say, guy does you, something interesting and makes pays us back. When you were doing the Gary Marshall movie, like, yeah. you're saying like I'm only doing this to pay for the rugs. <laughs> I'm like, no. how, how many rugs? There is a, there is a, there's a lot of, uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of rugs when you have a house. And, and, and Four stories, and, it's a lot of bare floor. And I didn't know rugs, I didn't know, yeah, because it's, you it's New kid, York. You got a kid, four stories plus bare floor equals a two-year-old's, uh, uh, that, that's like a d- disaster, sliding and stairs. Yeah. Absolutely. You need rugs for you that kid. Rugs. Need friction. Maximize and rugs the friction. Are pricey. Rugs are super pricey. I didn't. I didn't know that. What but. kind of rugs you get? You get some nice Persian <laughs> rugs. What do you got? I don't think there's any Persian in there. It's like ABC, you know, like carpet. It, is it what? There's a carpet gump. The carpet place called ABC Carpet. Oh, I thought it was like for they were kids' rugs. Like they had ABCs on them. <laughs> no, no, we're just doing no, no, we don't. <laughs> We had a, someone sent us a nice little like throw rug that was was all the states, but but we I think we donated it to a local grade school. Did you hear that, uh, Maya Rudolph? Yeah. <laughs> Could have given it to you. Your Could fucking we... rug sucked. The rug. <laughs> no, it's the thought that counts. Oh uh, god, no, I, don't think, I don't think she sent it to us. Someone sent. It. She uh, it. For, Forte, yeah. uh, do you have kids? Family? I don't. I Parents? got nothing. Nothing. None of that. So just by, by choice or just b- because you're I, a wolf I'm, man? Yeah, I'm very late on this thing. I, I, I want to do it at some point. <laughs> yeah. You mean like you want to have sex at some point? <laughs> Jeff, I have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That was like... Prove it. it. Uh. <laughs> Korean style. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's the, sh- the show's over. No, the shit has hit the fan. The show is over. Yeah, I heard the music cue. Yeah, you're just about to talk about my my lack of family and stuff like that. I was gonna get to friggin' get therapeutic here. And that's been our show. Thanks for coming to Harmontown, everybody. I, I I'm looking. Let's hear it for Spencer Crittenden, Rob Find Schraub. Find me out there. I'll talk to you about it. Jason Sudeikis. Will Forte. I'm Jeff. Your mayor is Dan. Thank you for coming, everybody. Drive fast and take chances. Need to take off.